What's up guys? It's yo boy Oma Sensei. Welcome to What If A Martial Arts Master Was Reborn As Choji In Naruto Part 1 Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Robert Bob Richards had always been very serious about his training. He was held as a master of martial arts from a very young age, and he garnered many fans with his chiseled body and good looks. His blue eyes were mesmerizing, and coupled with his blonde hair that enhanced his already handsome looks, made him the idol of many women in the world. However, one day he realized that he could not defeat opponents who were larger than him. He vanished from the martial arts scene and dedicated himself to a special training regimen that increase his power and weight, while maintaining his agility. It's time for me to retrain my ability year by year in seclusion. Bob finally returned to the fighting world as a changed man. Those who know Bob were astonished by his transformation. His handsome looks were gone and instead, he gained a disproportionate amount of weight. Bob paid no attention to their critics, and relied on the benefits of his training. Speed, power, and unyielding weight as his weapon. He decided that he was ready to return to competition. He joined the sixth King of Iron Fist tournament to test his martial arts abilities once again. Challenge upon challenge he faces, until finally, he beat all of his opponents, albeit he did not come out unscathed and with some near-death experience. After winning the tournament, Bob became a worldwide sensation. Bob was lost in fame. His schedule was filled to the brim with a series of television and magazine interviews, with his secret training, left undone for a long time. Many days later, Bob walked out of his bathroom past a poster of his obese self on the wall, with droplets of water still present on his body. He weighs himself in his exercise room, where he discovers he only weighs a shocking 150 pounds on a scale. Huh. He steps off, wondering if it was just an illusion, then weighs himself again. After after looking at the number once more, not believe that he really weighed 150 pounds. Later, the mirror shows Bob wearing baggy clothing covering a skinnier and slimmer body, and he shouts in horror, not accepting the fact that all of his pride had weight vanished without him ever knowing it. Nuo, why God? Why? He then proceeds to bang his head on the wall, only to be found in the middle of the floor, passed out. Another year passed by, and Bob who regained his past weight once again entered the King of Iron Fist tournament to prove he was the strongest in the world. On the way to his match, the road before him exploded, blocking his way forward. The smoke cleared to reveal a lone man emanating an evil aura. Bob had no idea what was happening, but his instinct told him that this guy was somehow connected to the surrounding destruction. Bob's sense of justice stirred inside him, and he vowed with all his might to defeat the man before him. As a red mist fell over his eyes, Bob forgot about being in a hurry to the tournament and walked toward his opponent. Bob flips high into the air yelling, speed and wait. He lands hard on top of the man before him and crushes his opponent's back. As he stands in victory, the floor under them suddenly cracks and breaks apart, taking both of them down. The day after, the newspaper was up with its cover stating that Bob, the previous champion of the Iron Fist tournament, never made it to the tournament and lost by default to his first opponent. Moreover, Bob was never found again ever since. Some said he met with his demise and some believed that he went into another secluded training. Boy, uh, it's here. Clan head, congratulations. Inside a lounge in a hospital, several rotund-bellied men could be seen anxiously yet happily congratulating a tall, plump man with naturally brown hair, who seems to wear a long, spiky red hairpiece. He has purple markings on his cheeks, a common trait that could be seen in his fellow clan members of his clan, the Akamichi clan. He wears a samurai-like outfit which entails a black suit completed with armor that has the kanji for food on it. He also wears a rope belt and hang guards. Also, instead of a forehead protector around his head, he wears a hachimaki. Wambohaha. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's hold a party after we are done here. It's all on me. Today is 1st May, and today is the day of my firstborn's birthday. The said man was grinning from ear to ear, which signifies how happy he is. A little tear of happiness could be seen on the edge of his eyes. Happy for both his wife and newborn child. Cheers for the clan head chowser. I'm gonna eat until my stomach bursts. Don't forget the sake, it's a must. On this happy occasion, the man Dash Chowser didn't mind splurging his money. It's his first child after all. Moreover, it is a boy. Count me in, brother. How can you celebrate the birth of your firstborn without me? A man with long ash blonde hair reached into his lower back, which he wore spiky on top and ending in a long ponytail, light green eyes, and strong facial features, which included a well-defined jawline. The said man was wearing the shinobi standard flak jacket over a black outfit, complete with hang guards, a kanoha forehead protector, and a sleeveless red hayori. Inochi. 
I thought you were busy with your interrogation unit. At ease, buddy. At ease. You will not be left behind. No one will. Wahahaha. A big grin plastered on Chowser's mouth. His sworn brother Dash and Noichi was one of two people who watched his back so many times over that he lost count since his younger days. What a drag. My wife is also on her fifth month pregnancy. It seems a triple treat for us three this year. Another man with two scars on the right side of his face, which were probably his most noticeable feature. And he has dark hair tied up into a spiky ponytail. Dark eyes as well as a goatee. Shikaku. Well haha, maybe it's fate. Fate, I tell you. Our kids will be on the same team just like us in the past. A small smile tugged on Shikaku's face. He wondered how their kids would cope with the Ino Shikacho formation in the future. Meanwhile, a doctor suddenly came out of the labor room and approached Chowser, then bowed. Mr. Akimichi, congratulations on your firstborn. Please come in to take a look at your son and wife. Chowser strode inside and saw his lovely wife with beads of sweat still present on her face. Their son was in the nurse's arms on the side. Give me my son. A huge grin hung on Charles's face. He coated his hands with chakra to soften any force that may hurt his child. He was as careful as he could be. A small tear threatened to escape on the edge of his eyes. My son, you shall be named Chaji, Chaji Akamichi. Look at the cloud so carefree. I wish I was a cloud, flying freely in the sky without a care of the world. A little six-year-old boy could be seen lying down under the shade of a tree. He sighed from time to time with his eyes closed. Beside him, a chubby kid of the same age as him could be seen munching a handful of potato chips while doing a horse stance. What are you doing, Chowji? A kid that had messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth and nails, coupled with the distinctive red fang markings of a certain dog-loving Inuzuka clan on his cheeks, was looking curiously at Chowji. Woof. Easy Akamaru, easy a small puppy with white fur that resembles the Great Pyrenees, was resting on the kid's head. Can't you see, Kiba? I'm doing a horse stance, answered Chowji without pause between his munching while regulating his breathing. I can see that, you moron. I mean why are you doing that? The wild looking kid, Kiba, was snarling. He clearly annoyed by Chowji's nonchalant answer. Hearing Kiba's question, Chowji shifted his eyes to look at him with a ridiculing gaze, as if he was asking are you stupid? Kind of gaze that clearly success in making Kiba feel even more annoyed, and became angry enough to pounce at Chowji to teach him a lesson. With a backward jump, Chowji dodged Kiba's pounce. Then with the tree bark as a footing, Chowji did a somersault and landed softly on Kiba's back. Speed and weight. Shocked by the unexpected turn of events, Kiba took the brunt of Chowji's heavyweight body. Cough Kiba felt slightly suffocated by the state he was in. No joke, he's still a six-year-old boy with a normal-sized body for kids of his age. He still has yet to undergo any heavy physical training set, nor has he trained any of his muscles properly. If we compare the body size of the current Kiba and Chowji, Kiba is like a normal-sized horse and Chowji is like a healthy stallion. Bigger, healthier, heavier. The amount of regular food that Chaji consumed in a day alone could feed Kiba for more than a week. The snacks were not included. Coupled with Chaji regularly did his past training, albeit the milder version because of his tender body. I'm doing the horse stance to train my lower body and discipline while I'm eating to increase my weight and power. Besides, fat is art. Even Shikamaru who secretly listened to their conversation was dumbfounded. Fat is art. That's new. You only say that because you're fat, Chaji. With your big belly, no girl will ever fancy you. A fair-skinned little girl with light blue eyes and short platinum blonde hair worn in a twin tail was looking at Chaji contemptuously. She was holding several clover leaf and riverside flowers while behind her, a girl with featureless white eyes with a tinge of lavender color could be seen shyly following her. Zip it Eno, no boy like a bag of skin covered bone either. You should gain some weight, especially in certain places. The Sanin Tsunade Sama is the perfect example of beauty. Am I right, Shikamaru? Chaji replied with a hand crossed over his chest. He spoke like he declared a heavenly edict. In response to Chaji's question, Shikamaru opted to dodge the bullet with silence as he pretended to sleep. Meanwhile, Kiba's eyes sparkled seeing his crush walking behind Ino and instantly forgetting his current grievance. Hinata chan Oh, get off of me Chaji. Chaji stepped aside to let Kiba stand on his own feet. Besides, he thought that it was funny to mock Kiba while he tried his best to present his best side to Hanata. Chaoji doesn't know why his physiology and emotions have reverted to zero ever since he was born in this world. Yet his pieces of knowledge are easily regained gradually through dreams after his first birthday. Yes, Bob aka Chaoji Akamichi regained his past memories bit by bit, and he transformed gradually into a training maniac rivaling a certain person with a bushy eyebrow. With a quick snatch, Kiba took a stalk of flowers from Ino's hand and presented it to Hanata with his best smile. Not forgetting to kneel following the main lead of the soap opera his mother watched, Kiba felt that he was so cool, that even the Tsunade Heim Sama of the three legendary Sanans would fall head over heels for his charm. This is for you, Hinata-chan. That's mine like a banshee, Ino let out a shrill cry, and hit Kiba with her wrathful fist. Serves you right, Kiba. 
Who told you to provoke the she-devil herself? Xiao Ji was wearing a mock grin on his face, and Shikamaru could not hold his silence, and let a little chuckle out. Who are you calling the devil? Ino snapped and dashed to Chaoji and Shikamaru. Chaoji was fine as he opted to run and climb the tree to escape. But Shikamaru was less fortunate and became the victim to take the brunt of Ino's wrath. Different from the original Chaoji who lacked self-confidence, the Bob Chaoji's self-confidence could be felt oozing from his every pore. He loves himself, never ashamed of his fat self. Hell, he even felt immense pride out of it. After rounds of beating, Shikamaru was saved by Kiba's question which diverted everyone's attention from himself. Tomorrow is our first day at the academy. Do you think that we'll be in the same class? Apparently, Kiba's attempt to garner attention is successful, because Ino stopped her fist and took a thinking posture instead with her index finger on her chin. Hinata was silent, Ino just shrugged her shoulder, while Chaoji just continued to munch his chips. Only Kiba opened his mouth to shamelessly utter his childish flowery words. I don't know about all of you, but I and Hinata-chan are definitely in the same class. We're fated together, aren't we, Hinata-chan? In response to Kiba's words, Hinata just meekly hides behind Ino while clutching her hem. Hinata was shyly looking at the ground, tears threatened to flow down her face. Look Kiba, you scare her? Ino glared at Kiba with her fist ready to greet his face, if he dared to utter another nonsense. Seeing Hinata's response, Kiba was baffled, while Chaoji and the rest just laughed looking at Kiba's down face. Compared to my previous chaotic world, up until now, this world is sure as peaceful. I hope it will stay the same as it is. Thought Chaoji while still laughing merrily with everyone without stopping munching his chips. Whatever, what I need to do now is do more learning and training and eating. A man can wish for anything however they want. But whether their wish will come true or not is another story. Contrary to Chaoji's wish, later that night, on the far side of the village, a tragedy ready to befalls one of the four noble clans of Kanoha. The clan that once thrived with lives, prestige and fortune, became one of such that only had members that could be counted with one hand. That night was the bloodiest night in Kanoha ever since the night of the Kaiubi attack in the past, and one that changed the lives of many people in the village. Oni Sama Wai. And that night was the starting path of one little kid to take the path of an Avenger. So father, are you finally willing to teach me our clan technique? Well haha, you sure are eager to learn, son. Inside the main compound of the Akamichi clan, two men and one boy were having a conversation. They were talking over a big pot of tea and grilled kebabs. The boy was Chaoji, and with sparkling eyes, he continuously bugged his father and uncle for them to teach him the clan's technique. The men were Chaozi, the Akamichi clan's 15th clan master, and Chaobi, his brother. They were both Chaoji's father and uncle, and both three were the clan's present and future main pillars. It's good to be eager. But you must know, Chaji Chan, our clan technique mainly utilizes the Yang release to strengthen our body and change its size. Chabi spoke while lifting his tea glass and enjoyed the aroma. Like other Akimichi, Chabi has a rotund build and distinct markings on his cheeks. He is a rather short middle-aged man with a triangular beard and a mustache that has angular corners. His hair and mustache are brown. He wears a small pair of glasses and a samurai-like outfit, which entails a green suit completed with armor. That has the kanji for food on it. Members of our clan possess great physical strength, and are able to quickly convert calories into chakra, which we then use in our various secret techniques. Most of these techniques rapidly consume the user's chakra during use, and maintaining them during a prolonged battle, can be very tiring. For this reason, our Akamichi have high chakra reserves, and eat a lot in order to build up or replenish their body in chakra reserves. As a tribute, members of the clan wear the kanji for food on our clothing. If standard calories aren't enough for a battle, our Akamichi clan members can use the clan's three colored pills to convert excess fat into chakra at the cost of one's health. Though we also have a secret technique to do calorie control, a technique which grants the user the ability to freely convert the calories they store in their bodies into chakra. Essentially the technique does what the three colored pills do without the excessive drawback. Chaoji nodded solemnly hearing his uncle's explanation. He knew about the consequence and prerequisite of the clan's technique, which is to have a strong physique. That was also why he spent most of his time training, albeit he did not do it madly like a certain bushy brow shinobi that always shouted youth, and wearing green spandex all day. Chaoji was sure that a person must have a few screws loose on his head. Last year when he was 8 based on pewter jutsu alone, he was able to easily beat a chunin from his clan in a spa. Who he was kidding? He was the champion of the Iron Fist tournament in his past life, the most brutal martial arts tournament in the world, with various weird and world-shattering martial artists from every corner of the world. Heck, there were even robots and monsters. He would be ashamed instead if he lost in the field he was most prided in besides his explosive fat, his martial prowess. 
If he was beaten in ninjutsu and jinjutsu field, he would have no qualms about it. But in tojutsu, he might as well bang his head on a block of tofu and die a horrible death. Although your physical body is ready even since you're seven, your spiritual energy is not. That's why we told you to practice your chakra exercise and control. Chowser added while his hand leaning on the table made of alloy and his eyes observing the kebab on the hot pan. Chakra is created when two other forms of energy, known collectively as one's stamina, are molded together. Physical energy is collected from each and every one of the body's cells, and can be increased through training, stimulants, and exercise. While spiritual energy is derived from the mind's consciousness and can be increased through studying, meditation, and experience. These two energies becoming more powerful will, in turn, make the created chakra more powerful. Therefore, practicing a technique repeatedly will build up experience, increasing one's spiritual energy, and thus allowing more chakra to be created. As a result, the ninja is able to do that same technique with more power. This same cycle applies to physical energy, except the ninjas need to increase their endurance instead. At any given time, a ninja will have a maximum amount of chakra that they can form and use before it runs out, and they need to rest to replenish it. With practice, this maximum can be increased, but only to a certain extent as they are limited to the quantity and strength of chakra that their genetics grant them. Sun, as I said before, our clan's technique mainly uses Yang Chakra to strengthen and enlarge ourselves. But Yang Chakra is a part of advanced nature transformation and is seldom used in ninja techniques. When there are advanced nature transformations, there are also basic nature transformations. Do you know what they are? Chao Bi explained patiently to add Chao's explanation. Chao Ji nodded. He was excited about the novel things this world has, and ninjutsu was the main part of it. So of course Chu Ji was curious and learnt lots of things pertaining to it. Moreover, it was a knowledge taught in the academy. Good, my son is smart. Bohaha. Chaozer was laughing in full excitement and happiness as his hand ruffled Chaoji's hair. Then let's test your basic elemental affinity. Mine is earth and fire. While your uncle here has earth affinity. Fret not, more basic affinity doesn't mean that you're certainly stronger. It just means you will have it easier using elemental jutsu. Hearing Chaozer, Chaobi took out a chakra induction paper and gave it to Chaji. Here, take this. Put a little of your chakra to it. Chaoji did as he was told to and watched in wonder. When he saw the paper in his hand as a part of it crumbled into a speck of dirt. And another part ignited and then burnt to ashes. Chaobi smiled as he nudged Chaozer, like father like son. In his excitement Chaozer laughed merrily. Then stood and walked to the courtyard. After he reached the center Chaozer turned his body and called Chaoji. Come, son. Let me show you our clan signature technique. Baika no Jutsu. Chaozer made the ram hand seals and slowly weaved the chakra inside his body and then his whole body inflated like a balloon, and became bigger. Star sparkled inside Chaoji's eyes, he was eager to learn this technique. The bigger the size, the more power he can utilize, right? But it also means that he has to increase his agility even more than before, so that he can still maintain his agility in this bigger form. Chaoji imagined himself as a giant, and stomped all the bad villains with ease, while shouting speed and weight, troll could be seen on the corner of his lips. Now, try it, son. You have to learn the buban biker or the partial multi-size technique first. You do it like this Chaozer are slowly instructed Chaoji step by step on the way to utilize the buban biker. No jutsu technique. After many trials and errors, Chaoji was finally able to increase the size of his arm to the size of an adult Akamichi clan member, several times his own. Good. Now, you have to get the hang of it first before I teach you another technique. If you need anything, ask your uncle. I'll be busy handling the clan's matter most of the time. Yes. Father, Chaji replied with an eager nod and a bright smile on his face. I'll master it in a flash. They sure are very hyped up. Chaobi chuckled as he watched the father and son duo's training. As Chaoji diligently trained, an old man could be seen watching him from afar. Greetings elder, Chaobi Akamichi bowed to greet the said old man. He then took a step forward to offer the cooked kebab to the elder. The old man had short spiky brown hair and dark markings around his eyes. Like all other members of the Akamichi clan, he had a very robust build and markings on his cheeks. How is he? Elder Terifu, Chaoji looks really promising. He's full of drive to get stronger, honest, and has a chivalrous spirit. Moreover, he has a good head above his shoulder, and has the charisma of a leader. Chaobi answered full of spirit, he was proud of his nephew. Elder Terifu looked at the remains of the chakra induction paper used by Chaoji, same as his father. Elder Terifu nodded, he would keep an eye on the clan's heir, and be ready to step in at any time to guide him, if the heir is encountering a problem that he cannot solve by himself. He might be already a retired ninja, but that doesn't mean that he has no means or influence in the shinobi world, especially in the Kanoho village, to throw his weight around. He is Tarifa Akamichi. He was one of the pupils of the second Hokage. He witnessed the creation of the Kanoho village when he was little. He went through three shinobi world wars and is still alive to tell the tale. He might not have the power to shake the world, but he does have the strength to bring a village into ruins on his own. Many might forget, 
But there was a saying regarding the Akimichis. Don't ever provoke the Akimichis, you're too small to receive their wrath. Years passed by, and it was almost time for the graduation test for the Konoha Ninja Academy students. Naruto, yikes, Aruka sensei a spiky blonde head boy was seen hanging on a rope while painting the Hokage's monument with various drawings. He grinned happily while holding a can of paint and paintbrush on each hand. What the hell are you doing here during class time? Get down here, you moron. Almost immediately, Naruto was apprehended by Aruka and several tuning guards. Inside the class, Naruto was tied by a rope in front of Aruka. He was clicking his tongue in annoyance. Not a shred of regret could be seen on his face. Tomorrow is the academy's graduation exam. You have failed your exam two consecutive times. Aruka was furious and lashed out at the culprit Naruto. Steam-like breath fled below his nose, and fire almost could be seen inside his eyes. Moron, this is not the time for you to cause trouble. Yeah, yeah. Hearing Naruto's nonchalant answer, something snapped inside Aruka, and veins bulged on his forehead. Time for a review test on Henge no Jutsu. Everyone line up, one by one, and transform into me. Chittering from the students was buzzed like bees. They reluctantly lined up and occasionally threw an angry gaze at Naruto. Chaji was, as usual, munching on his snacks while standing in the queue line. This Naruto is quite a handful guy. All year round he keeps getting in trouble. He threw a quick glance at Naruto and kept in mind not to tangle too much with this troublemaker. Although he knew that this little guy was just lonely so he kept seeking attention, he also noticed that the Hokage, or at least the Anbu, were keeping an eye on him. The unknown factor is too risky, based on Shikamaru's analysis. He is the so-called Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. Lost in his thought, quickly, it was Chaoji's turn to perform. With a puff of smoke, Chaji transformed into Aruka. Pass brilliant. Next, as expected, Chaji passed the review test easily. Not different from the transformation technique, Chaji is also able to perform both the clone technique and the body replacement technique easily. Thus, he was able to pass the graduation exam with flying colors, and place second in the overall ranking, with the Achiha Air as the first and Shikamaru as the third. Although Chaji was able to outdo the Achiha Air in the practical test, literally acing it, he was far from the best in the written test, the theory was never Chaji's forte. So, his overall score was less than the Achiha Air. While Shikamaru was able to score a perfect mark on the written test, he was too lazy to bother to perform his best on the practical exam. The night after the exam, Chaji was strolling by himself after he was told by his homeroom teacher, Aruka, to assemble at the training ground in the morning. Shikamaru was held by his mom to accompany her went shopping, while Ino went out with Sakura to do their stuff. As he walked far in the forest, Chaji felt a massive amount of chakras being used. Chaji was not a sensor nin, but it was hard not to notice if the amount of the flared chakra was that massive. He was sure that he was not the only one who felt that chakra. Hum, what was that? Instantly, Chaji was put up his guard. With his agile body, he sneakily went into the forest and swiftly searched for the chakra source. I did IT databeo. Even without his sharp hearing, Chaoji knew he would be able to hear this loud shout. He recognized this voice. It belonged to the blonde troublemaker, Naruto Yuzumaki. Positioning himself on a high tree while hiding under the shadow of the leaves from the tree beside him, Chaoji's subtlety erases his presence to spy on Naruto. As big as he is, espionage is one of the basic things taught in the academy. What is this guy doing? Chaoji saw Naruto with a big scroll on his back did a few hand seals, and summons a few clones. He practicing the clone technique. But didn't he fail already? Wait, there is something different about that clone scrunching his eyebrows. Chaoji observed Naruto's clones. He stared intently at them, analyzing each and every one of them. They look more solid, and there are few to no differences between them, and the original maybe Chaoji would think differently. If he had the Hayugas by Akugan, but with his current knowledge and capabilities, that was his conclusion. Chaji's curiosity was at its peak, and this Naruto began to intrigue him. He stared intently at his every move, including his hand seals. I might try that later slightly more than an hour passed by, and Naruto unceasingly trained even when his clothes were in a tattered state, and his breaths were ragged. I have found you Aruka suddenly flickered in front of the panting Naruto. Oh, I found the pervert nosebleeder sensei. Idiot. I am the one WHO found you. Naruto was grinning foolishly while looking at Aruka. Meanwhile, Aruka was surprised to see the state Naruto was in. He he, yes yes sensei, you found me. I was only able to learn one skill from it. Naruto said happily while scratching his cheek and patting the big scroll. Naruto you're beaten up like an abandoned dog. What are you doing? Aruka said he observed Naruto from head to toe. Never mind that, Aruka sensei. I'm going to try an incredible technique if I'm able to do it. Let me graduate, alright? Then Naruto began to form a hand seal. Without waiting for the dumbfounded Aruka in front of him to respond. Oi Naruto, where did you get that scroll on your back? Aruka said interrupting the enthusiast Naruto. Oh, this. Mizuki sensei told me about it. And guess what? He also told me about this perfect place for training. Declared Naruto proudly. He was grinning widely. 
and his face was saying something along the lines of praise me now. He said that if I show you this technique, you will have no choice but to let me graduate Databeo. Mizuki. Aruka frowned upon hearing Naruto's words, he sensed that something was amiss. Then, Aruka's danger sense was flaring. By reflex, Aruka pushed Naruto away and crossed his eyes in front of his face. Flurries of kunais and shurikens were rained onto Aruka, which resulted in him being stabbed in several places. Luckily, none of them hit the vital area. Dang it. I let my guard down. Nice job in finding him a man with white shoulder length hair with a slight hint of blue to it, and green eyes, was squatting on top of a tree branch. He wore the standard attire of the Kanoha Shinobi, which included the flak jacket and forehead protector, that he wore like a bandana. Now Naruto, give me the scroll. Mizuki flatly said while turning his head in Naruto's direction, his finger was hooked, and Kunai could be seen clearly dangling on his hooked finger. Abu, what's going on here? Naruto was baffled by the sudden turn of events. Naruto, there's no point in you having it. I'll tell you a truth about yourself, Mizuki grinned mockingly, with a hand on his hip and gaze full of contempt. Mizuki, no, don't Aruka was both angry and full of panic. It was a top secret, the Hokage himself ordered that no one should tell Naruto about this. Twelve years ago you know about the demon fox being sealed, don't you? Hearing Mizuki, Naruto tilted his head in confusion, not understanding what Mizuki tried to tell him. Since that incident, a new rule has been created. But, Naruto stop. Aruka was even more panicked than before, his hand stretched, and he threw a kunai which Mizuki easily dodged. He he he, the rule is that nobody is allowed to talk about the fact that you are the demon fox. Huh. Naruto was baffled, his mind stopped thinking, Mizuki's word was like an exploding bomb inside his mind. I am the demon fox. Stop IT. Ha ha ha, yes Naruto, you are the one that killed your beloved Aruka sensei's parents, destroyed the village, and massacred innocent people. A mad glint shone inside Mizuki's eyes, he was laughing gleefully without restraint. You were sealed up by the hokage that you admire, and you have been lied to by everyone. No, Mizuki. A vein popped up on Aruka's head, he gritted his teeth with anger and regret. You have been lied to by everyone. Didn't you find it odd how everyone hated you? Aruka is the same. He actually hates you. Mizuki reached his hand and was prepared to throw a big sized shuriken to quickly kill Naruto and took the scroll for himself. Clap 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 three hand claps could be heard interrupting Mizuki's preach, each and every eye was focused on one rotund figure who with great confidence strolled inside this dark forest while munching potato chips slowly. Nice speech Mizuki sensei, student Akamichi, is it? What are you doing here? Wary of Chaji's presence, Mizuki eyed his surroundings. Are the ambers here too? This is not good. I have to snatch the scroll and leave as fast as possible. Without warning, Mizuki leaped and charged at the distracted Naruto. He was fast and looked like a blurry shadow. Well from an ordinary untrained person's perspective of course. With a stretched arm, Mizuki attempted to grab the scroll on Naruto's back. Unfortunately for him, Naruto was able to react slightly on instinct and threw himself away. Mizuki was only able to touch the scroll, but was not able to grab it. With a second leap, Mizuki hurriedly made another attempt to snatch the scroll away. Buben Biker no Jutsu. With a leap, Chaoji flickered above Mizuki and enlarged his right hand. He smashed Mizuki like swatting a fly. Aruka who was worried for Chaoji and expecting a battle to occur was Jurogate. He never expected a genin who had just literally graduated this noon to defeat a seasoned chunin. Granted Mizuki was an average shinobi with nothing special about him, but he was a chunin nonetheless. Is this the strength of a noble clan? Even their kids are this strong. Aruka's mind was boggled. Although Chaji performed well in class, he never appeared to be this strong. Heck, even the Achiha heir can't hold a candle to the ease Chaoji handled Mizuki. The Akamichi clan is one of the four noble clans of Kanoha village. Many of their clan's techniques revolve around the manipulation of their body weight and size through the use of Yang release. With three others Aburam, Hayaga, and Achiha. With their bountiful resources, the noble clans were able to better nurture their members. But that was not the sole reason for Chaoji able to possess his current strength. He trained non-stop for most of his time with a passion that would make a certain green tight-suited Janin proud, coupled with his past knowledge and achievement in martial arts. And of course, his clan's vast resources, his strength was advancing by leaps and bounds, even surpassing his clan's former best geniuses by a large margin. As for a certain emo kid, he has the talent and the drive, but his resource was not the most optimal. Sure, his clan was rich. But after their demise, who was the one who handled all that wealth? Surely not Sasu Emo. You are weak, Mizuki Sensei. You need to eat a lot more, Chaoji said, while back to utilizing his both hands to eat his potato chips, leaving unconscious, beaten, and battered Mizuki on the ground. Unlike the original Chaoji, he did not wear the underwear-like thing on his head, so he did not appear silly. Instead, he let his hair loose to his back as he combed it from the front side to the back side, and that gave him a bit of both wild and neat at the same time. As for you, Naruto Kun Chaji slowly approached Naruto. He then silently eyed Naruto. The person in question was still distraught, his mind was wandering. Snap out of it. Will you Chaji kick the down Naruto on his chest lightly? Use your brain juice to think properly. 
How old are you? 12 years ago you're just a baby at best. And what can a baby do? You are not the demon fox, you are Naruto, the silly boy who ranked last in the class, the troublemaker, and the one who aspired to be a Hokage, am I right? With Chaji's speech, the light seems to be back in Naruto's eyes, and his flickered spirit turned ablaze. He flipped his body and stood on his two feet with both hands clenched hard. Yes, I will become a Hokage Databeo. A small smile now hung on Chaji's lips, and with a light smack, he hit Naruto's back. Now use the technique you learned earlier and graduate, you will be a fine shinobi. That's what I'm sure of. Just don't slack off in your training. Naruto grinned and he was excited. He nodded and formed a hand seal. Thank you Chaoji. Now watch me, you two Aruka sensei. Taju Kajabunshin no Jutsu. Puff 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 multiple clouds of smoke filled the region, and as it receded, dozens if not hundreds of Naruto's could be seen filling the forest area to the brim. That's one heck of a technique, just how monstrous his chakra pool is. Chaji was internally sweated. This was an impossible feat for him, even though his chakra pool was comparatively larger than most of his peers. Nishishishi, how about at Databeo? I'm amazing, aren't I? Do I pass Aruka-sensei? Said Naruto while he nudged his own nose. Meanwhile, Aruka was still shocked. He was unable to utter any sound. Just how strong is the youngster nowadays? First, it was Chaoji. But it could be attributed to his clan. But now, Naruto too. I have to report this to the Hokage. Moments later, Aruka snapped out of his trance and smiled wryly. With all of the earlier commotion, I bet the Hokage has already been notified, and the Ambus are already on their way if not already here watching us from the shadow you've grown up Naruto at least I hope so Chaoji POV. Meanwhile, after I got into my courtyard, I tried to perform the shadow clone technique that I saw earlier. It's done like this then this poof a puff of smoke appears, and then nothing. Damn, again. Poof after several dozens of attempts and many hours later, another me finally appeared inside the room. We're identical almost in every aspect except for our chakra pool size. So far so good, approximately B-class technique. I pondered while observing my own clone. After a while, I tried to release it to try the feedback from it. Manageable? Now the next part, multiple shadows clone I remembered Naruto and his monstrous chakra, and then wondered how Naruto was able to possess and control that many chakras. Maybe his gene, training, or perhaps the Kyuubi's influence. Hum, that ought to be noted. But before he made another attempt at the shadow clone technique, Chaoji succumbed to his fatigue and went to sleep. Troublesome in the far back of the class, Shikamaru grumbled. He covered his eyes with an eye mask while Chaoji leaned his body on the wall beside him. In front of them, their classmates were all talking and speculating, their sounds were all loud. In a particular spot was a specifically crowded place where almost all of the girls were staring. In there, a blonde-haired boy was squatting in front of a certain black-haired at Cheha Air. They were staring at each other provocatively. A spark almost could be seen between them. Their stare was so intense before they were kissing. PFFFT Chaji, in his shocked state, almost choked himself to death with his favorite potato chips. His eyes were literally bulging, and his jaw was now almost touching the table surface in front of him. Naruto bastard. I'll kill you. Kaya. Saz Yukasama, his kiss Nuo, my Saz Yukasama various high-pitched screams from various girls in the class could be heard, their sheer shrill screams could even put a banshee to shame. Meanwhile, the culprit was spitting his saliva around, hoping to forget that ever happened before he became the punching bag of every girl in the class. Silence. Aruka barked out loud even before he stepped into the class. In his hand, he was holding a stack of paper with myriad things written on it. Now, you all will soon be assigned duties by the village. And today, we will be creating the three-man teams, with each team will have a Jounin as their sensei. Aruka said, his eyes sweeping the students from left to right, staring deep at each and every soon-to-be Jounin in front of him. You will follow sensei's instructions as you complete the assigned duties. Do you understand? Yes, Aruka sensei good. Now with that, Aruka began to read everyone's names and assign them to their designated teams. Team 10, Nara Shikamaru, Akamichi Chaji, Yomanaka Ino. When the three of them were called, almost none of the students present felt surprised by Team 10 formation. As expected, the Ino Shikacho. I wonder if their formation is any different from their predecessor. In response, Chaoji unwrapped a sandwich and took a bit nonchalantly. Shikamaru closed his eyes to sleep for a while and Ino was busy glaring at the smug Sakura. The three of you will be headed by Asuma Saratobi after that, Iruka continued to assign a few more students to their teams, before he excused himself and let the Jounins take over. Team 1, come here. Team 2, meet me at dot dot Team 3 a few Jounins were calling their team members, and except for Team 7 each team had already met their Jounin. A few moments later Team 10 was assembled at the edge of the village near a waterfall. Well, Good afternoon, for the starter, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Asuma Saratobi, and you can call me Asuma Sensei. 
Ah, make your introduction short. Asuma was a tall man with brown eyes, olive skin, short black spiky hair, and a beard. His clothing consisted of the standard Kanoha ninja uniform with the sleeves rolled up halfway, a flak jacket, regular shinobi sandals, and a forehead protector. He also wore a sash with the kanji for fire. Marked on it around his waist a pair of black bangles and bandages wrapped around the arms of his sleeves. So he is the Hokage's son. The trio thought while observing their sensei as he observed them. He is the one that will be our sensei. Huh? Currently, Asuma holds a cigarette in his right hand and observes the three new team members. My name is Shikamaru Naro. Mine is Chaoji Akamichi. I am Ino Yamanaka. Albeit Shikamaru was lazy to the bone, Chaoji was a bit playful, and Ino was impatient to see her Sazuka. The three of them knew when to get serious and tacitly understood each other's intentions. Good, the classic Ino Shikicho combo. To be honest, I was tasked by my old man, the Hokage himself, to lead this team. But if you three are not up to my standard, then I'll apologize in advance. I will talk personally with the Hokage to make the three of you quit as ninja. You all are the precious heirs of our village's prestigious clans after all. Asuma talked while observing their reactions, and to his satisfaction, they were all still level-headed. Now, tell me what you three are best at. As for me, I am a former member of the 12 Guardians of the Fire Country, so escorting and direct combat are my specialty. I'm best at Buki Jutsu. Asuma then gestured for Shikamaru to start his part, puffing smoke from his nostrils. With my current capabilities, what I'm good at is strategizing and intelligence gathering, Shikamaru said his part. Then, after he finished, Shikamaru nodded to Chaji, signaling for him to continue from his part. As for me, I'm best at direct confrontation, Chaji said beamingly, looking at Asuma. My Tajutsu is rather good. And me, like Shikamaru, I'm rather good at the intelligence gathering also. Although a newbie, I'm a sense of Nintu. Ino continued immediately after Chaji finished his part. Seeing that everyone had finished their explanation, Asuma nodded and smiled. Then meet me near the Nara Forest entrance tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. You're all dismissed. The next day, a few minutes before 8 a.m., Nara Forest entrance. So, where do you think our sensei is? Ino, with her puffed cheek, was annoyed. It was almost the promised time, and the supposed Tobe sensei was still nowhere to be seen. The patient Shikamaru sighed. He leaned on a tree and stared at the fleeting clouds, hoping to end the test as soon as possible, so he could lie down and relax. Troublesome. Maybe he ate bad food and had to fulfill nature's call, Chaoji said while munching a beef jerky. Disgusting. I wonder how you can say something like that while eating. Ino scrunched her brows and showed a disgusted face to Chaoji, while Chaoji just shrugged his shoulder in response. Suddenly, four kunais were launched against them out of nowhere, with one aimed at them and the other somewhere between them. Shikamaru and Chaoji could barely deflect the incoming kunai, while Ino threw herself to the side to dodge the incoming kunai. The fourth kunai was stabbed at the tree bark beside Shikamaru. A small scroll was attached to its handle. Carefully, Shikamaru took the kunai and unfurled the scroll. For a few seconds, he read the content inside it before handing it to Chaoji and Ino to see. Currently, there are three different scrolls inside the forest. They're placed not far from what you are and hidden within your specialty. Find one of the three, then we're cool. The time limit is before the sunset. Good luck. Ash your awesome sensei Chaoji POV. It has been four hours since the test began, currently. We're having a lunch, and we already have solved the meaning of their place not far from what you are. It's pretty easy actually. It's ball for Eno, deer for Shika, and butterfly for Cho. The literal meaning of our name is not that hard to understand, and Shikamaru was able to solve it in less than a minute. As for a specialty, we can only assume a few things dash shadow, illusion, body even then. We're not sure yet. As for the problem that makes us still confused and yet to find a single scroll, let alone retrieve it, it is not because we're not able to find the three creatures mentioned above, but it's because there are too many of them. This is Nara Forest for Dango's sake. Hundreds if not thousands of deer live here. In the valley nearby is a nest of thousands of butterflies of various kinds. And in both places, there are at least dozens of boar nested. But unlike the two previous beasts, which mostly stayed in a group, the boars are mostly a loner, and they're scattered around the forest. How are we supposed to find these scrolls again? It was clear that Eno started to feel frustrated at our slow progress. If we combine the two clues given to us, then it could be the shadow of deer, the illusion of boar, and the body of the butterfly. That is if we connect it based on each of our names and clan specialties. Shikamaru said while rubbing his non-existent beard. It could be the body of a boar, the shadow of a butterfly, or the illusion of a deer. There are way too many of these creatures thus, another hour passed without us being able to find another clue about the scroll whereabouts, until third POVGRRRR a snarling sound reverberated in the forest, the leaves fluttered, and the wind whistled around. Shikamaru, Ino, and Chaoji, quickly jumped into their hiding position. Shikamaru signaled for Ino to do reconnaissance. Ino quickly formed a hand seal to perform her sensing technique. The sensing technique allows sensor type shinobi to mold chakra and change it to the sensor type. This enables them to detect and track down targets through their chakra signatures. 
A few seconds passed, and Eno was finally able to detect the source of the disturbance earlier. Um, guys, I think I don't know the relationship between the boar and a test. But you guys are probably able to figure something out. Eno used another one of her clan techniques to transmit her probing result directly onto her teammate, the Kanchi Denden. No jutsu or sense transmission technique. By making physical contact with another individual, the user is able to transmit what they are currently sensing directly into the target's mind. The user's perception can then be further transferred to another individual that person is connected to, such as by physical contact. Inside both Shikamaru's and Chaji's minds, an image of a huge silver color boar was approximately 10 feet high and 30 feet long 7 or 6 feet wide. For a chakra beast, its size was considered average. But besides its size, its current attributes and abilities were yet to be known. The silver boar's snout was sturdy looking. It was as if the snout was covered by a steel plate, coupled with its menacing long tusks. It certainly was not an opponent a Jenning could handle. Around it was three corpses of wolves with another five of those wolves that were still around was surrounding that boar. We're kind of lucky the wolves are attacking that boar, else we'll have no other clue to continue our progress thought Shikamaru. Hum. Eno, zoom in a bit into the cliff wall behind the boar. Shikamaru creased his eyebrows and told Eno to do as he told. So that's it, that boar is protecting something behind her. I bet those wolves smell something, most likely blood and attack her. Most likely that boar was just giving birth and still in a weakened state. I can bet five pack of my potato chips. Her newborn is inside that cliff wall. Most likely it is covered by a layer of illusion or some sort, Chaoji explained with an unhurried tone and emphasized the word illusion to signal something to his teammates. So, that's mean. Ino held her words and turned to Shikamaru for confirmation. Yes, maybe it is one of the contents of the tests. And it's highly possible that one of the scrolls is inside that boar's nest. With a nod, Shikamaru affirmed her doubt. It's only a possibility. But it's our best shot so far. Shikamaru continued and gave an order for the team to sneak into the boar nest search for the scroll, and retreat immediately at any moment's notice. And if it's push comes to shove, Chaji, do you think you can fight that silver ball? He he, not a problem. Chaji grinned and flexed his biceps for both Ino and Shikamaru to see. Then if that's come to it, we'll do it just like a training, any problem. Shikamaru eyed Chaoji and Shikamaru, who replied with a grin from Chaoji, and a small nod from Ino. Then, engage. Inside the calm Nara forest, among the rustling leaves, three shadows could be seen hidden among the tree shades. Two of the three could be seen sneaking around nearing the cliff wall, with each step they took. If you zoom in, you can see their features. One of them was a man, while the other was a woman. The man had spiky black colored hair, while the woman had long platinum blonde hair tied in a ponytail. The man was Shikamaru Nara, and the woman was Ino Yamanaka. Using the moment when the big boar was distracted by the wolf's assault, both Shikamaru and Ino sneaked inside the wall behind the boar. Just as they dashed onto the wall and braced for the impact, the wall flickered and they passed through it. Bingo. Shikamaru signaled with his hand for Ino to search from the right side, while he searched from the left side. He remembered his father's wise words, men to the left because women are always right. Back to the topic, minutes passed and Shikamaru managed to find a scroll placed between a stalactite and a stalagmite. Immediately, he went to look for Ino to get out of this place and continue their mission. Shikamaru went to the right side of the cave, and his mouth twitched seeing the sight before him. In front of him, Eno could be seen carrying a pair of piglets, with her eyes turned into a heart shape. The pair of piglets was one white and one black, with square-shaped bodies. Dots for eyes, a snout, and a curly tail at the back. She's not trapped in Jinjutsu, is she? Again, Shikamaru was not sure. It could be her love for cute things fled up. He did admit though that the piglets were cute. In spite of their cute appearance, Shikamaru had a foreboding. That something bad was going to happen. Shikamaru approached Ino, tapped her shoulder, and disrupted her chakra flow. Kai. His attempt was answered by a roundhouse kick to his ribs, courtesy of Ino. Well, at least he tried to help Shikamaru. I'll bring them with me. Ino said with a firm tone and a sentence that clearly did not leave any gut to negotiate. Troublesome indeed, Shikamaru whispered under his breath. He hated it when his gut feeling was right in these kinds of things. Third POV. It has been close to 10 minutes, and the walls have just retreated leaving the wounded, but still enraged. Silver ball guarding her nest. Her attention didn't get distracted by the wolves anymore, but luckily she was only focusing her attention on the outside surroundings. I'm sure that they'll manage somehow, but just in case Chaoji readied his jutsu and prepared to leap forward at any moment's notice. Although he was sure of Shikamaru's cautious persona, it did not hurt to be prepared. After a while, in the corner of his sight, Chaoji saw both Shikamaru and Ino sneaking outside. But Chaoji noticed that something was odd. Wait, Ino's little mounds are not that huge. True to Chaoji's thought, two piglets were currently snuggled in Ino's arms. And as if they were sensing their parent was nearby, the two piglets oinked enthusiastically. Ino was still showing an infatuated expression on her face, while Shikamaru could only sigh in annoyance. Sensing her offspring were approaching her, the silver-colored boar turned her body to face them. As for Shikamaru, he signaled for Chaoji to distract 
distract or possibly knock the beast unconscious for them to slip out peacefully. I hope that girl will not become the end of us someday. Chaji heavily sighed as he leaped forward, tucked himself into a ball shape, and rolled towards the ball. Chaji uses the multi-size technique, Biker no Jutsu to enlarge his own body, then uses the human bullet technique, Nikiden Sencha, when he's about a dozen meters from the silver ball. Due to his increased weight and the force of their rotation, most obstacles are pulverized upon contact. Due to it just turning its attention to her babies, the mother boar was not able to face Chaji on time, and got hit on her side. Thump as the dull impact sounded and the mother boar was blasted onto the cliff wall, Chaji immediately cancelled his human bullet technique and planted his feet to halt his forward momentum. Doton, Dory Tiger. As the body of the mother boar hit the ground, Chaoji used the earth release. Earth flow river technique. This technique used to change the surface underneath his opponent into a mud river that sweeps them off their feet and carries them downstream. Alternatively, Chaoji uses mud to restrict the beast's movement as it slowly drowns in the mud. Feeling that it was not enough, Chaoji leaped forward once again and did a somersault before using another one of his clan techniques. Yubin Biker no Jutsu. Chaji enlarged his right foot as it descended downward in line with the mother boar's head. With a loud bump, the mother boar went unconscious after letting out a reluctant grunt. What the hell are you thinking Oni Ino? Chaji admonished Ino's reckless behavior. It's certain that taking a baby from its mother when they're supposed to just sneak into its nest was certainly a foolish act. What did you just call me, you dirty belly bag? Ino fled up and she gritted her teeth. Although she knew she was in the wrong, she was reluctant to admit it. Eno, Chaoji is right, you know. It is only because we need to step out of the cave as soon as possible that I let you take these two piggies. Shikamaru added, trying his best to convince Eno so that she would not act so foolishly as this in the future. Unfortunately, both of their advice fell on deaf ears as she only harumphed in return. At least listen carefully. Choji feels like he could lose several kilos of his fat just from talking to this devil girl. So, Oni Ino, what are you going to do with these square piglets? Grill them. Chaji said as he mockingly eyed the piglets. They are not food. Ino angrily stomped on Chaji's foot. Calm down. Then what do you two think we should do to this pig? Kill it. Shikamaru massaged his head as he continuously sighed tiredly. His question was answered by silence from Ino, and a glare from Chaoji to Ino. I say, we give these piglets back to their mother. We're here for the test, so that will be our main focus. Chaoji said firmly as he faced Ino. No, why should I? Ino said reluctantly which gained an annoyed sigh from both Chaoji and Shikamaru. It's like this if you're forcefully kidnapped by the enemies, presumably after they kill your family. What are your feelings be? Shikamaru slowly says to Ino. Ino, we're ninjas now. We have to grow up and should discard our childish mindset. Or do you want it to kill us someday? Chaoji immediately followed not letting Ino rest. Everyone had their own independent thought process. It was impossible to force people to view things from your own exact point of view, even if that person is a person close to you. Only reality had that kind of convincing power. Even then, it was not absolute. Both Chaoji and Shikamaru knew this. But still, they didn't want Eno to suffer because of her ego. Fine, I'll give them back to their parents. With a sad look, Eno finally relented. Looking at Eno's sad figure, Shikamaru sighed for the umpteenth time, then gave Eno another piece of his mind. Actually, I have one more thing in mind. If you're able to contract their mother as your nin partner, then slowly you can make a contract with them too. But as you know, she's not that strong. I'm fine with that. It's not my style to engage in direct confrontation anyway. It's more like Chaoji's part. Besides, her illusion ability is different from your usual typical Jinjutsu. I can make do with that. A happy smile blossomed on Eno's thin lips. She was genuinely happy with the turn of events. While the silver ball was unconscious, Eno took out a beast contract scroll which was given by her parents as her graduation gift along with several other things. Coincidence. Nope, she was that pampered by her parents. Eno unfurled the scroll and took out a kunai before poking her own thumb slightly. She molded her chakra and then placed her bloodied thumb on the scroll. The symbols drawn on the scroll began to glow slightly. Eno then proceeded to slash the leg of the unconscious boar, took a bit of its blood, and placed it on the scroll. The runic seal symbols glowed even more brightly before they floated out of the scroll, and went inside the silver boar's body. As it was still unconscious, it did not provide any fight whatsoever. When the runic symbols embedded themselves in its mind, as it was just an ordinary chakra beast, it was not capable of speech. Fortunately, the link between them allowed Eno to understand Boar's thoughts, and vice versa. I'll call you Mama Jin. One Eno grinned, then she turned to face Chaji. By the way, belly bag. You're getting stronger again, don't you? Shikamaru and Eno were kind of feeling insecure. The strength gap between them and their teammate was once again widened. If this trend continues, it's not an exaggerated term to say their party was carried by Chaji. Welp, 
I guess a new thing or two needs to be learned. Either sharpen the old blade or add some new tricks in the sleeves, maybe both. Shikimaru sighed softly, troublesome indeed. Meanwhile, Asuma was pleasantly surprised by their cooperation and their care for each other. Their gems all right weeks passed since Team 10 passed their test. Compared to the other teams, it is safe to say their team was the best in the teamwork aspect. It was as expected for most people, as their clan Ino Shikicho combo was renowned, not only in the Kanoha village, but in all shinobi villages. As time passed, just like all of the other teams, they attempted dozens of D-ranked missions. Currently, they're running several D-ranked missions at once. Chaji was seen pulling a cart across the marketplace accompanying a grandma. Shikamaru was seen as a cashier at a shop in the business district for the whole day. And Ino was seen inside one of the merchant's houses, reluctantly babysitting several children. They're all little devils I tell you. Why they can't even stay in the same place for more than a minute. Ino grumbled, she felt wronged by the mission given to her. Do you think that being a cashier is better? That shop was too crowded for their own good. Those customers have not even bought a single thing. Yet they keep asking me questions like there's no tomorrow. I mean, they can ask those questions on another day when I'm not around, can't they? Shikamaru complained being irked that he could not enjoy his peaceful nap. Do you think accompanying that grandma is any better? If I don't have my strong arms, I can't even think about how can I pull a whole carriage worth of supplies by myself while still walking through the market for another bout of a shopping spree. That was not a grandma, she's a godforsaken shopping demoness. And she won't even stop talking about her past stories. I don't care about who she danced with 40 years ago, Chao Ji said with the nine tears falling on his face. Team 10 was currently resting after they ran their missions for the whole day. For them, the restaurant owned by the Akamichi clan was the perfect place for them to rest, their VIPs anyway. Let's talk to Asuma Sensei tomorrow. I have enough of this deranked stuff. Ino was complaining as usual, but unlike any other day, both Chaoji and Shikamaru agreed with her. Ding, yo, how's everyone doing? All good. Asuma walked into the VIP's room, as their sensei, and as a son of the Hokage himself, he holds that privilege. Speak of the devil, and he shall come. Ino said, amazed by the timing Asuma popped in. Who are you calling the devil, little witch? A hand stretched and rubbed Ino's hair. Hey, hands off, sensei. I spent hours on this. Ino swatted Asuma's hand, she felt wronged and annoyed by her sensei's antics. Anyway, how's the progress of your missions? No problem I assumed. Asuma talked with an I know it all kind of face. There are zero problems with the progress of the missions, we cleared all of them. But, we need to do a higher rank mission. To be honest, we're all fed up with these D rank missions. Sensei Shikamaru sighed softly, like his other teammates. He yearned to do some more challenging mission. That or spend a day doing nothing but napping under his favorite tree. Shikamaru's claim was supported by strong nods from both of his teammates' three pairs of eyes looking at one figure, practically begging for their torches to stop. Asuma stared back at them, and after a while, he opened his mouth to answer. Show me your progress first. We don't want you guys to step out of the village only to be beaten black and blue outside, do we? Tomorrow, training ground 6, 7 o'clock, morning. After that, Asuma's figure flickered before he disappeared from the place he stood before. Our focus now is to raise your survival rate. First you... Little witch, show me how far you've learned. On the platform of training ground 6, Asuma puffed smoke and gave orders to Eno. In response, Eno stepped up, forming a hand seal, then aimed at one of the little birds perched on a tree meters away. Asuma then threw a shuriken without warning to Eno, which Eno evaded with her graceful movement. The thing he emphasized about Eno first was her ability to split her mind and real-time focus to process several things at once. Not stopping at that point, her body also needs to be able to co-op with her mind. It's useless if you know something, but are unable to react to it. So the minimum requirement Asuma placed on Eno was for her to be able to perform her clan's mind-body switch technique while still staying mobile. That way, one of the weak links in the group, her state of vulnerability while performing her clan's technique would no longer exist. Not stopping his hand, Asuma kept throwing some shurikens and kunais at Ino for her to dodge for 10 full minutes. She occasionally threw some shurikens of her own before Asuma performed an earth-style technique to soften the ground below her, which made her caught off guard. Then with another hand seal, Asuma performed another earth-style technique to launch some little rocks that hit her on her back. You need to be more aware of your surroundings. Not bad, but you should be able to improve more. Next, you drop eyes, come here. Asuma called Shikamaru and took out a kunai from his pouch. Shikamaru, different from his usual set, brought out two short swords, which he held one for each hand. With a strong kick to the ground, Shikamaru dashed to Asuma while keeping his stance as low as possible. Clang A sound of metal collided was heard. Left diagonal slash from Shikamaru's left sword was parried by Asuma. But, Shikamaru quickly followed by an upward vertical slash with his right sword, which was dodged effortlessly by Asuma. With his keen mind, Shikamaru was able to pick up Buki Jutsu, or more specifically Kenjutsu. Albeit he's able to learn the technique theories in less than a week, which takes other people months if not years, it's a different story to ingrain it in his body. 
Shikamaru knew that the disparity between his mind and physique would be covered as time went on with a lot of practice, so Shikamaru worked on that. To say Asuma was impressed is an understatement, he was practically mind-boggled and slack-jawed at Shikamaru's genius mind. You need to be more creative when you gain a basic mastery over your sword, you should try to incorporate your jutsu with them. It could be used for various things, from increasing the damage output to distracting your opponent. To Asuma's advice, Shikamaru just threw another horizontal slash for an answer, which followed with a sidekick aimed at Asuma's ribsage, then a swift stabbing motion onto his sensei's throat. Kajime no Jutsu won after parrying Shikamaru's slash and blocking his sidekick, Asuma threw a left jab to counter Shikamaru's stab after he sidestepped. To his surprise, his body was momentarily unable to move for a second, allowing Shikamaru to jump back and avoid his jab. Asuma glanced down and saw a thread of shadow was on its way to retreat, after connecting with his shadow and clicking his tongue. Sensei, thanks for the advice. By the way, I almost gained basic mastery. It's the first time I incorporate my jutsu though, Shikamaru said with a small smile on his lips. This rascal Shikamaru charged once more, swords placed low, and a glint shone in his eyes. On his way, Shikamaru tried to use the same trick once more. Alas, Asuma suddenly flickered and kicked his leg, so that he tripped. Don't let excitement cloud your judgment, and never in any circumstances underestimate your enemy. Do you hear me? Drop eyes. Shikamaru sighed, and as usual, he only muttered. Troublesome. Don't let excitement cloud your judgment, and never in any circumstances underestimate your enemy. Do you hear me? Drop eyes. Asuma said menacingly. He crossed his arms and sneered. Dang it, Sensei, you just hate to lose, don't you? Shikamaru said, half annoyed that he still holds no chance against Jounin ranked Shinobi, at least without proper advantage. An enemy will take each and every advantage they have against you. Dirty or not, all is game for survival. The winner is the king, while the loser is the peasant. Asuma did not mince his words at all. His students needed to know the ruthless side of the world. Get up and stand to the side, Chaji, you're up next. Yes, Sensei, please don't hold back. Chaji said excitedly, he was kind of impatient to compare notes with his Sensei. This is literally the first time he would be able to spar freely with his Sensei. Come, Sumo Kid, show me what you got. Chaji weaved a series of hand seals, then kicked the ground and charged forward, his right hand throwing multiple exploding tags, while his left hand formed a hand seal then slammed his hands on the ground. A multitude of rocks from the ground fly to Asuma like a hell bullet. Doton, Toby Tsubute, one the exploding tags propelled along with the hail of rocks to Asuma, and Asuma was slightly startled by Chaji's sudden action. Nice one, C-ranked technique right off the bat. However like magic, Asuma's figure among the explosion was replaced by a log before Chaji's attack managed to hit him. You're open. Asuma's right hand was raised and immediately in motion to smack Chaji's head from the back. Asuma wondered whether Chaji was not as strong as he thought. Doton, Shinj Zenshu no Jutsu. Too shy the figure of Chaji that Asuma almost smacked earlier puffed with a loud bang. A hand almost managed to grab his ankle. Fortunately for him, Asuma quickly flickered. He was not harmed, but unfortunately for him, his cigarette fell victim to the technique and was smashed by Chaji. While he was surfacing from the ground, I just bought it, and it's my favorite. He was lost for words. A while ago, he just advised his students never to underestimate the opponent, yet here he was suffering from underestimating Chaji. Okay? I underestimated you, Chaji. Now I will raise the stakes a bit, Asuma appeared a dozen meters away and said to Chaji. He took out his trench knife made from a special material called chakra metal. While Asuma said his piece, Chaji didn't stop and executed another technique of his. Doton, Toby Tsubute. With another series of hand seals, Chaji propelled another batch of rock that flew toward the target, Asuma, from his side. In response, Asuma holds the trench knife right side up. Then, after infusing chakra into the knife and further expanding the blade's length, he slashed horizontally at the fire swarm which effectively dispersed most of them before he dodged the rest. Bukajutsu, Mach Monji 3 Futen, Surida Case. Four Asuma slashed and threw a fast wind blade generated from his quick slash, empowered by his wind nature chakra toward Chaoji. Chaoji, who had just taken his first step forward, immediately sidestepped and managed to evade the attack by a hairbreadth. Sensei's reflex is inhuman, damn. As expected from a Jounin, the Hokage's son, and the former guardian. He's strong Chaoji thought as he dodged several more of the same attacks, when suddenly two Asuma appeared on both of his sides, and already charged at him. Chaoji hastily used another Earth-style technique to erect two rock walls on both of his sides, to either stall for time or better if Asuma rammed straight through it and became incapacitated as a result, which has abysmally low possibilities. If only I'm able to cover my whole body with an armor strong enough to shield me from harm, I could smash my whole enemies flat with reckless abandon. Wait, that's it. It's only a makeshift technique that I created when I reverse engineering several jutsus. It's not a forbidden technique or anything, only I've yet to try it. Moreover, it's not certain that it could be used in battle. Chaoji continued his line of thought, while his body still danced, following the rhythm of the battle. 
His almost rotund body bounced left and right, while throwing some attack of his own occasionally. Screw it, no pain, no gain, it's a spa anyway. With it, Chaoji, for the first time in this spa, formed a series of hand seals. His left and right hand each formed different seals altogether. Combination technique, Doton, Rokutaden. Five with a clasp of his hand, Chaoji's body began to expand, just like when he used the multi-size technique, and the rock on the field flew toward him, encompassing his expanded body. Just like armor would, grand straight. As his body expanded, Chaoji jumped high in the air. He faced down where the training field was and took a karate-like stance with his right hand on his hips. Then his waist turned, and he swiftly threw his now massive rock in case fist. Oh, holy cow sweat trickled on Asuma's forehead. He flickered hastily and took both Shikamaru and Ino out of arena. After the dust settled, Asuma looked back and took sight of the devastated arena, and his mouth twitched. I'm gonna get an earful scolding from the old man. Both Shikamaru and Ino were slack-jawed. They couldn't believe their eyes. They knew that their teammate Chaoji was strong because he never ceases to train. But they didn't know that he was this strong. Both senses of inferiority and the need for improvement rose in their heart. They were unwilling to be a burden to Chaoji. A team was supposed to cover each other's weaknesses and amplify each other's strong points. Chaoji was akin to a mountain, and they're akin to a little sand dune. He can easily protect them and cover them, but when an enemy that is able to pressurize him appears, it is a big question whether they would be able to cover his back. I need to get stronger Eno bit her lips. Her hands clenched hard. She slightly regretted the time that she spent on many unnecessary things, fawning at the itch her air included instead of improving herself further. So it was still not enough. More. I need to train more Shikamaru gritted his teeth. He loves his freedom and lacks time. On condition all of his close ones are safe from all harm. And he's not become a burden to them. He hates to be a burden. Unknown to all but themselves from this point, the string of fate began to strum a little. Whether it was a good omen or a bad one, no one has yet to know. Sensei, can we postpone our mission for a while? We want to train a bit more. Yes, Sensei. We want to ensure our prowess is enough to survive the harsh world. Both Shikamaru and Ino asked Asuma for a chance to shape themselves further, so they would not become more of a burden for Chaoji. At least, that's what they thought. Okay then, one week. In this one week, I'll help you get stronger. As for how far you can go, that's all up to you. Shikamaru, I'll help you with your buki jutsu. Ino, I'll ask a friend of mine to teach you some jinjutsu tricks. She is one of the best non-bloodline limit jinjutsu users in Kanoha. Asuma said with a grin plastered on his face, he was happy, after all. Which teacher would not feel happy if their students were so enthusiastic? Besides, he got more reasons to meet her. Well haha, I'm sorry guys. I was slightly overexcited back there. Chaoji walked to them with a sheepish grin. As expected, that jutsu is yet to be completed. He sighed as he clenched and opened his hand slowly, trying to feel his numb hand and waist. My body is not quite ready either one earth style. Flying thrown stones two earth style. Double suicide decapitation technique three weapon technique. One straight line four wind style. Sharp wind five earth style. Rock titan a weak flash by, and it was time for team 10 to do their promised mission. With the Hokage's permission, team 10 picked a C ranked mission. Okay? Our mission is to hunt Chakra Beasts near a village on the outskirts of the Fire Country. It is a C-rank mission, but if we clear this and are able to prove our abilities, maybe my old man might allow us to attempt a higher ranked one. Currently, Team 10 is in the VIP room of the Akimichi restaurant. Chaji, Ino, and Shikamaru were happy that they would be able to attempt their first actual mission, besides running a daily errand for the village. Really? Ino asked, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Yup. As for the details of our mission, several chakra beasts were spotted in the forest near Oka village. The village head worried that it might endanger the villager. He requested us to slay those beasts, and to check whether something made the beast appear near their village. The reward is 80,000 Ryo. Shikamaru was silent, Ino was seriously listening while Chaoji was absorbed into gobbling the various foods before him. 80,000 Ryo, not a sum that flinches them. This meal alone cost them more than 10,000 Ryo in total. Yes, they have never been allowed to spend that grand amount on their own. But that amount was commonly spent by their family in one session of shopping. You've all trained hard, but it's not even funny if we fail because you cannot concentrate on the mission because of your lack of sleep. So, rest well tonight and prepare for the necessities for tomorrow. We meet at 9 sharp in the morning, near the village's north gate. After Asuma finished telling the details of the mission, Asuma went home, while the trio continued to eat whatever was still left after Chaoji's inhuman eating. Leave some for us, you pick. Ino angrily said while reaching her hands to the grilled beef on the table. While Shikamaru was out to order more food for them, it was all on Chaoji anyway. And three randang for takeaway. Pleased with that, Shikamaru returned to their previous room while whistling happily. His Nara clan was not lacking money. But compared to the Akamichi clan, which was a noble clan, his Nara clan's wealth was not worth mentioning. Heck, in the hierarchy, 
The Nara and Jamanaka were the vassal clans of the Akamichi, Chaoji, POV. Today, we're going to do our first mission. I'm so excited. Although it's true that I've been through many things in my past life, in this current life, this life of mine was mostly confined inside the village for obvious safety reasons. It's true that I did prove myself to be a one-of-a-kind genius. But the truth still holds true that I was nothing but a child, albeit a gifted one. In the years since the first time I was taught about Chakra, I've fallen head over heels with it. Why? It's my dream. With it? I can spew out fires, make water appear out of thin air, and many more. You know what? To be honest, I envy my rivals back there. Don't ask me why that sign of Mishima, Jen, could generate electricity from his fist. The same with that Kazama guy, and the old man Hahachi. That poor guy, too, even with his weird hair, was able to shoot fire from his limbs. I was only able to envy them back then, but now. Ha! Huh. Look, Paul, my fire will cook you alive. You're just so so what thing. Your fists were able to shatter a bus-sized meteor. Watch this, yours truly will drop a mountain on you. Let's see how you cope then. Muahaha, this sense of fulfillment, I can't get enough of it my to-do list. Still has a long way to go to be completed. I can't get lazy now. Being a genius is a great thing. But being a genius is not unprecedented. The closest generation genius is one man named Atachi from the once glorious Ichiha clan. He was their pride of genius. At age 6, Atachi enrolled in the academy, where he consistently scored the highest in each subject, and quickly learned any skill taught to him, resulting in him being praised as the best of his generation. After four months, his teachers unanimously agreed to let him take the graduation exam early, due to Atachi being more than advanced enough for the genin level which he passed later that month. He only needed a total of five months to graduate, five damn months. He then became an Anbu captain before he became an international s rank criminal. After murdering his entire clan, sparing only his younger brother, Sazuka, he afterward joined the international criminal organization known as Akatsuki. Well, enough of him. I can't thank God enough for letting me be born in this new world. He even let me be born in an amazing clan. This awesome clan of mine was absolutely the best. Most of us were not ashamed of our chubby figures. We take pride in our fat, and we power up with the said fat. Fat is power. Fat is art. We have this technique that is able to convert a prided fat into chakra. It's called the calorie control technique. It's not an impressive name, yes. But it's a literally useful one, especially considering our clan prided rotund figures. This technique grants the user the ability to freely convert the calories they store in their bodies into chakras to be used in their unique fighting style, which ranges from expanding parts of their entire body. Akimichi, who is less experienced with this technique, uses the three colored pills to initiate this process. However, these pills have the adverse effect of converting all the calories in the user's body to chakra. Once the technique is fully learned, however, the Akimichi no longer have the need for the pills and can regulate how much of their body weight is converted at any given time. One of the upper echelons in the clan, Uncle Doto, has once shown me one technique that is more than useful. It's crazy awesome. It's called Cho Modo or Butterfly Mode Technique. The user can enter this mode by converting the calories of his body into chakra. The chakra, when visible, is shaped into two large butterfly wings that can be compressed into smaller wings. The technique uses an enormous amount of chakra. In this form, the user's combat ability is greatly enhanced, allowing the use of the clan's high-level techniques, such as Choden Bakujeki, no jutsu or butterfly bullet bombing technique, and the ability to use the chakra wings to create gusts of chakra. Uncle Doto strictly warned me not to use this technique in prolonged battle, and to not use this technique unless one has mastered the calorie control technique and has high chakra control. As for me, he he, I've become proficient in it already. I've yet to use it in actual battle, though, I wonder if there's any opponent that's strong enough to entertain me. I can't go all out for a kill with a fellow Kanoha citizen, can I? As for whether I had a qualm about killing a person, know this. I'm not a stranger to the dark side of humanity. My old world was riddled with war because of two certain mad companies' ambition to rule the world. I know it sounds like they're insane, and out of their mind, they were. But they do have the might to back their insanity. Every day, people die on my left and right, so choosing between killing or not is no different for me than choosing to eat a scrambled egg with soy sauce or ketchup. It's completely up to my mood. By the way, which team are you on? Soy sauce. Ketchup. Enough of my ramblings, time skip no jutsu. Boiler, we're almost there. Team 10 spent 7 days traversing the land before they reached their destination village. It is because the team has to travel through a forest full of eerie beasts and poisonous animals via small rowing boats down a river that they're this slow, on top of the time they took for training on the way. If only there's not a poisonous and venomous animal in the jungle, we'll arrive way earlier than this Eno side as she lamented the environment they were in. Actually, we'll be there already if not for you taking your time to find an inn on the way here to take a bath every single day, Chaoji said as he was slightly pissed at Eno for wasting their time. That's why you're still single, Chaoji. 
Women love cleanliness and comfy Eno proudly said, stop whining. You all, let's just focus on the mission. We're almost there. Asuma reprimanded Eno and Chaji, his eyes kept darting around their surrounding. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Asuma frowned, he contemplated various possibilities in this mission. Ah, free like a cloud. Meanwhile, Shikamaru was having the time of his life, he was relaxing on a boat that was rowed by Chaji, gazing at the open sky, surrounded by nature. Kaya. There are mosquitoes. I hate insects. Eno pouted, she flailed her hands around and swatted the mosquitoes around. Unfortunately for her, she lost her balance and almost fell into the river. Be careful, there? Asuma quickly snatched Eno and pulled her back onto the boat. Thank you. Sense ouch. Eno flinched as something bit her left leg. In reflex, she kicked the air and threw the thing off her leg. Before the thing that bite Eno back into the water, Asuma quickly threw a kunai onto it. Shikamaru squinted his eyes as he observed it. A poisonous piranha, a local species of this area. I've read about it before, they are pretty aggressive, hunt in a pack, and have their teeth latched with a paralytic poison. It's not dangerous, but she won't be able to move for a while. Shikamaru analyzed. Asuma heaved a sigh of relief, memorizing these kinds of things is forever on his weakness list. Luckily, his students are one hell of a genius. He then took a cloth from his pouch, and tied it to Eno's leg. This should prevent the poison from spreading, we must hurry. The village is up ahead, let's go. Team 10 could be seen rushing between the trees with Eno carried by Chaoji at the center, Asuma on the left, and Shikamaru on the right. Not far from them, a beautiful wall constructed from sandstone could be seen beautifully glowing under the sunshine. Unfortunately, Team 10 has little time to admire its beauty. They rushed into the village and swiftly asked the villagers there if there was any doctor in the village. You follow this road, turn left on the crossroad. The doctor's home is the third one on the right side. He's called Dr. Shino, and he lives there with his apprentice. Her name is Amaru. They should be able to help you. A random villager answered their question after taking a glance at Eno's rather pale appearance. Thank you, sir. And was sorry for bothering you. Shikamaru bowed in gratitude, and they then immediately ran to the doctor's house. Excuse us, Dr. Shino. We have someone poisoned. Can you please help us? Shikamaru knocked on the door and politely said. Clang, a little girl with long reddish brown hair wrapped in a blue bandana came out of the house. She has rather thick eyebrows, blue eyes, and a mole under her left eye. She also wore a cyan blue guy with a cream colored vest over it which covered her cleavage, blue shorts, and dark arm and leg bands. Halo, please come in first, you can lay her there on the bed. I'm Amaru, Dr. Shino's apprentice. Amaru said while pointing at a bed covered with a white sheet. Thank you. Shikamaru said while signaling for others to come in. Chaji came inside and lay Eno on the bed, while Asuma took a cigarette and stayed outside. As they came in, Shikamaru inspected the interior of the room they were in. The room's interior was quite simple. It consisted of a large wooden table on the side with two chairs beside it. On the other side, there was a shelf containing some books in it. The wall consisted of white colored bricks with some candles on it. By the way, are you Shinobis? You sure look like one besides. I know everyone here, and you are not a local. Amaru said while smiling at them, she looked as innocent as she was. Yes, we are Shinobi from Kanoha. My name is Chaoji. He's Shikamaru, she's Ino, and the one outside is a sensei. I'm sorry, Amaru, is it? Where is Dr. Shino? Is he not present at the moment? Chaji asked worriedly. Yes, Sensei is not here at the moment, but he should be back in an hour or so. Meanwhile, I'll help you extract the poison from her body. Amaru answered with confidence, a small smile hung cutely on her face. Without waiting for agreement, Amaru began to act. A while later, Eno's complexion got better, and she started to be able to move her body. Thank you, Eno said weakly, while trying to put up a smile. I'm happy to be able to help. Please rest for a while until you're recovered. Amaru walked inside the house further. You're fine with tea, right? I'm sorry. We only have tea left. Ah, no need to bother yourself, we're fine. Eno said while Chaji nodded his head and Shikamaru scratched his cheek. It's okay. Sensei said we must treat a patient with utmost care. Amaru then boiled the tea leaf and prepared a few cups. Almost an hour passed, with all of them having a conversation. The atmosphere was relaxing, with occasional giggles from Amaru and Ino. Asuma went somewhere, Shikamaru was silent the whole time, and Chaoji quietly listened to the girls talk while slurping the tea occasionally. I'm home. An elderly man with long grey hair that flows out at the back and mutton chops connected to his beard of the same colour, walked inside. His eyebrows were thick and of a darker grey but neatly trimmed. He also had yellow eyes with dark bags around them and tear troughs under them, giving a somewhat stern look. Amaru, who are these gentlemen and ladies here? Seeing the Kanoha emblem on the guest's attire, his eyes flashed momentarily. Oh my, it appears that you are Shinobi from Kanoha, aren't you? Pardon me for my rudeness, my name is Shino. I am a doctor and Amaru is my apprentice. Shino said while slightly bowing. Sensei, everyone, this is my sensei. 
He used to be a shinobi too, but he's retired already and is now helping people by becoming a doctor, Amaru proudly said with her chest puffed, her face beamed with happiness. A former shinobi? Hum, Shikamaru's eyes opened slightly while contemplating. His eyes met with Chaji, then nodded. Shikamaru then stood and greeted Shino. We're sorry for intruding, Dr. Shino. My name is Shikamaru, and they are my teammates. This one is Chaji and the wounded one here is Eno. And we're here for a mission from the village chief. Nice, you keep your word. Of course we are. I hope you're not playing any cheap trick on us. Rest assured, I'm not. Well, Orochimaru-sama would be pleased with this trade. Inside a ruined place, two people were having a conversation. One of them was holding a scroll the size of the arm of an adult man, while the other was holding a glass vial filled with dense chakras. With this Kyubi's chakra sample, that would be stronger with this, Orochimaru-sama would be able to improve his experiment. Two people, each with their own agenda. One young and one old person was jovially observing each item in their own hand. Well then, I'll take my leave. Let's do the next trade again soon. One of them was packing his things and walking out of the place. And we're here for a mission issued by the village chief. Shikamaru said politely while secretly observing the elder in front of him. If I'm to guess, it's about the beasts. No. Shino said with an amicable smile on his lips after a brief pause. Yes, maybe after our friend Dash Ino fully recovered, we'll rest for a moment before we go to the chief's house. Shikamaru replied with a smile of his own. Well then, who am I to stall you for so long? I'm the doctor, let us hope our little miss here is not infected with anything serious. Shino walked walked in and readily approached Eno. He then performed several checks on her. Nothing serious here. Her nerves are just partially paralyzed temporarily. The harmful substances are all already extracted. It was Amaru's doing, I presume. Ah yes, Sensei. Amaru replied with a slight blush on her face, albeit with a little stutter. Good girl, you're getting better. A proud smile bloomed on Shino's face. He patted Amaru's head lightly with his coarse hand. Sensei is praising me. He he Amara's eyes closed as she enjoyed the head pack given by Shino. As I said, our little miss here has nothing serious. Just give her water, a lot of it, for her to drink. I bet her throat already feels dry like a desert. Also, let her rest for the night. She ought to be able to move normally in the early morning. Ending his examination, Shino gave Eno several advice regarding poison and venom handling. Well then, we'll take her with us. Thank you for your help, Shino-sensei. This is a little token of gratitude with a bow. Shikamaru took an envelope out of his pocket. It's not much, but please accept it. He raised his head and placed the envelope on Shino's hand. Well, thank you. I need this, to be honest. The price of the daily necessities are sky high now due to the beast's attack. Shino sheepishly said. Shikamaru just let out his business smile. Then he opened his mouth. With this, we excuse ourselves. Good night, Doctor. Chaji took Eno on his back, and with Shikamaru, they went to an inn in the middle of the village. After they lay Eno down, Chaji and Shikamaru sat and waited for their sensei. The sun has long set, and darkness illuminated the land. The dark clouds hid the moon as the wind blew hard. Slowly, the drizzle started, and rain began to wash the earth from its filth. Creek, yo, how's Eno? Asuma went into the room. Contrary to the rain outside, his attires were perfectly dry. Eno is fine, she just needs some rest. And behold, rest now she is. Shikamaru yawned while replying to his sensei. I think I need one too. Sensei, did you scout the forest? Chaji asked, he's still pondering about a particular thing. I did, we shouldn't begin our hunt tonight or whenever the light is dim. The number of poisonous and venomous creatures inside the forest is no joke. A frown was apparent on Asuma's face, his eyebrows creased, and his countenance darkened. We found something amiss earlier when we met this doctor. His name is Shino, apparently. He was a shinobi Shikamaru looked at his sensei, waiting for his words to be discerned by him. But that's not the main problem. The thing is, Chaoji felt an ominous chakra exuding from him. Yes, it was faint, even almost non-existent, and only for a brief second. Asuma walked to the side and leaned against the wall near the window. He opened it and lit his cigarette to begin smoking. Continue. So I briefly looked at Shikamaru to make sure whether I was the only one who felt it. And unfortunately, that's the case, Chaji added. He was able to sense the faint fluctuation of chakra as a side benefit, because of a particular hell mode training regiment from his dad, per his request. To make things certain, I asked Ino to check with her clan technique, just to be sure. Although Ino was paralyzed, it was only true from the waist down. Her chakra was still able to function normally, as did her upper body. Yes, Chaji asked me about it. And check out what I found Ino performed her clan's technique to share her experience with her sensei and teammates earlier. This Asuma scrunched his face up. This was the chakra signature of the Kaiubi. He would never forget this malevolent chakra full of malice. As for the trio, they knew Dash or rather had a strong hunch about what it was because of their interaction with Naruto. Yes, Sensei. Our conjecture is this is Kaiubi's chakra. Because of its implications, we don't dare to act rashly. So we're waiting for you to make decisions. 
Eno finished her part, she sighed as the importance of this information was quite big. Any information, experiment, and things regarding the Biju was a big deal. Everything about it was a secret kept close by every hidden village. So, knowing the possibility of an experiment or information regarding the Kaiwubi leaking out is a must to report to the Hokage. Asuma then took a blank scroll from his pouch and wrote a brief report. He then makes a series of hand seals before a puff of smoke appears in front of him. After the smoke receded, a small brown colored chimp appeared before him. Chim Chan, please give this to my old man. And here's a potato for you. Asuma gave the scroll to the little chimp and took a steamed potato on the table for it. The little chimp happily took the scroll with his right hand and the potato with his left. Chim Chim. He happily ate the potato before disappearing with another puff of smoke together with the scroll. Pretty convenient Shikamaru stared at it, unblinking. Its cute stars could be seen inside Eno's eyes. She was fond of cute things, as usual. Is it strong? Chaji asked. He was intrigued by other possibilities of its utilities. E-K-C-K, it's a summon create dash. We know. Asuma was not able to finish his smugness before he was interrupted by his students. It's special, unlike other summon creatures, Chim Chan comes from the Monkey Kingdom. They're one of few civilized creatures, and they were one of even fewer groups that know how to be a sage, and have their own sage. Asuma smirked, he felt great seeing his outgoing student Shikamaru, showing a baffled face. At least they used to have one so, can I continue my explanation? Smugness showed fully on Asuma's face. This is the power of experience, please continue, sensei. His mouth twitched as he was saying that Shikamaru couldn't hold his sensei's smugness. One day, I'll pour that beard with some chili powder. Let's see how you continue to act smug. It's like this dash as Asuma almost went on with his explanation, another puff of smoke appeared. And the earlier little chimp jumped out from the smoke while holding a different scroll. That was fast. The trio was surprised by the speed they were able to communicate from a long distance with a summoned creature. Asuma took the scroll and unfurled it, then became a bit serious. He then burned the entire scroll after he finished reading the entire content of the scroll. It seems we have to hold our little talk, we have a new task at hand. Asuma inhaled the fresh air from the window before he continued with his words. Chaji, for the main mission, you and Ino will continue our main task, and scout the village surroundings and the perimeter tomorrow. Shikamaru, you keep an eye out for this Shino guy, keep your distance. I'll scout the entire village and its periphery for another clue regarding this Kaiubi chakra, and the real identity of this Shino guy. I'll be back in the morning. Tomorrow at noon at the latest, there will be other Jounins that will arrive here to help us. Asuma gave a series of commands to his students before he vanished with a flickering shadow. The heck? The trio was shocked. It seemed that this was more urgent than they thought. Meanwhile, Shikamaru formed a hand seal to use the shadow clone's technique, in which his clone immediately departed before he himself seated and closed his eyes. I'll stand guard, you guys just rest. Chaji stood and used the multiple shadow clone technique and summoned two clones. That immediately used the transformation technique and transformed into a dove and a cat. His dove and cat immediately went out. The dove went to the roof, and the cat found a secluded corner near the stairs, with a clear view of their room door. Chaji took a book from his storage seal, a bag of chips, and a bottle of water, as he sat on a chair beside the door. It's a convenient technique, alright Chaji thought as he munched his chips. Somewhere inside the forest near the Oka village stood a fair-skinned little man with straight, dark brown hair and long bangs. That covered half of his left eye. He wore a purple shade of lipstick and had dark markings around his eyes, giving him an androgynous appearance. His attire was a black shirt under brown tunics with long sleeves. He bore the symbol of the sound village on his hem and black skin tight shorts. He wore black arm warmers, traditional black shinobi sandals with calf length leg warmers covered by bandages, and a purple, rope like belt tied in an inverted bow around his waist. One e san, just wait a little longer. With this scroll, Orochimaru sama will be able to complete his technique, and he will save our clan. The little man clenched his fist and excitedly held the scroll in his hand, he caressed it gently like he was caressing a fragile baby. How long has it been, one e san The time for a clan to be able to live a life normally is near. The little man grinned happily. He recalled the distant memory of the cheerful smile of his older sister, and the merry laugh of his caring parents. You're my son, alright? Is what he will say, I'm sure if I'm able to finish all of this. He he, I wonder how Yukimi one san will react. He was giddy and rather impatient to give the scroll to Orochimaru, so that the technique to stabilize his clan's ability would be able to complete it and used soon. Our clan will soon be able to face the sun and wind normally. We will be able to run on the open field without worrying that our body will disperse with the wind. He keeps mumbling lowly to cheer himself up. His clan's salvation is the only thing that keeps him from spiraling down into insanity. 
The little man then bit his own hand to draw blood. He formed a hand seal and slapped his hand to the ground. Not long after, a humongous snake that easily towered over buildings, trees, and large rock formations with its sheer size was summoned. It was perplexed with black rings running down intervals on his body, coupled with four horn-like protrusions on his head. Manda-sama, please enjoy your feast. I'm sure that you will like the taste of the beasts here. Although he was itching to get back as soon as possible, he was also tasked to feed Manda to fulfill Orochimaru's contract with Manda. The next day at noon, the whole Team 10 was assembled near the Oka Village Gate. With them, there were two other Jonins from Kanoha. One of them has featureless white eyes and a well-defined, broad nose. He wore the standard Kanoha uniform inclusive of a flak jacket and a forehead protector that he wore like a bandana. In comparison, the other one has black eyes and spiky, black hair that he keeps held in a classic Nara ponytail. He wears the standard attire of a Kanoha shinobi, inclusive of a flak jacket and a forehead protector. Thank you for coming, Kosan, Dean-san. Let me fill you in about what's going on, Asuma thanked the two new Jounin, while he gave them a brief summary of the little information they currently had after briefly exchanging greetings. He let out a sigh of relief that the two Jounin were doing a mission not far from their location. One was Ko, a Hyuga that will help identify and locate the Kaiubi's chakra. The other was Dean, a Nara and a veteran with rich experience of various events on his missions. While the Jounin were discussing the details of the new mission, the trio Genins were currently drafting their plans to finish their main mission. With their sensei focused on a new task at hand, they need to adjust their previous plan. The beasts are restless, though they're not forming a stampede. They're occasionally going into the village's edge and harassing the villagers. Chaji crossed his arms in front of his chest as he held his chin. The beast's attack was inflicting more damage to the Oka village than they initially thought. He and Eno had already gone into the village chief's place to confirm their objective and ask for some details. Based on the details, the possibility of something forced them to hunt outside of their turf. It could be because of their lack of prey, or there's another predator that stole their turf. If it's the latter, then it must be a very aggressive one. Shikamaru added he was done with his surveillance. Though to be sure, he still left a shadow clone to watch Shino's movement. Eno was still performing her clan's mind-body switch technique, and she was a bit pale. She gulped her saliva and urgently said, Um, everyone sensei, you have to see this dash Tenzo Aburi POV wake up, son. Hum. Who? Son, wake up. I felt like someone called me, and reluctantly I opened my eyes groggily. In front of me was a man with short brown colored hair, and a pair of eyes with matching colors. He wore a beige, raggy, sleeveless kimono and dirty brown sandals. Figuring out who was in front of me, I became dumbfounded. It was my father. I can't believe it. I pinched my thigh, and I felt pain. E dad. My voice cracked. I was nervous and afraid that it was just a dream. Unconsciously, my tears began to trickle like a river, my face heated up, and my breath ragged. Dad. I jumped from my straw bed and immediately tackled my father. Then I hugged him tightly. I felt like if I let him go, he would be gone for good. What's wrong, son? Did you have a nightmare? Huh. Let daddy chase the bad dream away. My father swatted the air as if a mere gesture would be able to chase a nightmare away. But I was too happy to care. Come on, son, let's have breakfast. Your mom makes your favorite dishes today, so eat a lot. He grinned at me. I didn't want to let go of this happiness, so I nodded hurriedly. Haha, <laughs> someone is eager. I went out of my room and sat beside the dining table. On the opposite of me, my Nissan was playing with her pencil, and it looked like she was writing something. It's done. Little brother, look here, I make this for you. She showed me the picture that she drew. It was a picture of four stickmen holding hands together. The tallest one is dad, this one is mom, this one here with gown is me, and this is you. My Nissan pointed at each stickman while explaining her picture. She was so into it. I was so happy that I could see her beautiful smile. This picture is for you. Happy birthday, little brother. Hey, my birthday. Wait, I felt like I'd been through this before. But I can't recall haha. The birthday boy himself doesn't seem to remember his own birthday. This is my gift for you, son. Dad approached me and gave me a soccer ball made of leather. As a boy, remember not to play outside the cave. Yes, dad. I said enthusiastically, who wants to play outside? This cave had almost everything for us to live. Ara Ara. My son seems so happy. Here, eat your breakfast. A figure of a beautiful middle-aged woman came into view from the kitchen. She was my mother. Her hair was long, wavy black, with blue eyes simmering with gentleness. Mom, I was so happy. I couldn't believe that our family was able to be together like this again. It's like a dream come true. My Aburi clan was secretive and lived underground in the Fire Nation. 
we had the ability, or I rather call it a curse, to turn our bodies into smoke at will, and still be able to interact with the world around us physically. However, this ability was imperfect causing us to occasionally transform without what we meant to it. In our smoke form, we were very vulnerable to wind as it caused us to disperse permanently and die. Because of that, my clan members did not tend to have long lives, and were forced to live confined in caves or places where the wind was practically non-existent. My son has become a big boy now, eat a lot so you can become strong in the future, mom said, while her hand patted me on my head, which I immensely enjoyed. As I enjoyed her rubbing, I felt her pat turn softer with every pat. I hesitantly looked at her hand, and dread filled me as her hand suddenly turned into smoke. Ah, she was surprised, and she turned her hand back not long after and retracted her hand, she quickly hid her shock with a loving smile, which I knew deep down she was afraid, it was the same exact feeling that everyone in our clan shared. Quick, finish your breakfast and help your dad feed the sheep. Mom turned and headed into the kitchen. I clenched my fist hard, I was indignant with this kind of fate. Why? Why did God make us like this? Constantly in fear of our ability activated on its own and getting out of control, then being dispersed in the wind just like that. I hate it. Time passed, and it was almost time for us to have our lunch. I laid my back on the straw in my backyard and thought about the future. Suddenly, a pale man with long black hair came with the village head and pointed at me, then said, I want this kid, Orochimaru Sama. I was surprised, then something clicked inside me. No wonder no wonder I felt familiar, I've been through this before. This is the day that Orochimaru picked me, the day before all of those torturous tests began. I snapped my eyes open and groggily surveyed my surroundings. It was all trees, swamps, and more trees. I felt my back drenched with cold sweat, and took a deep breath to ease the dizziness in my head. So, it was just a dream after all. I let out a big sigh, not really sure that it was because of disappointment or relief. It may be because of the disappointment of not yet being able to meet my dear families again. Or it may be because of the relief that I did not need to go through all of the tests all over again. As strong as my resolve was, I was not sure that I wouldn't cross the borderline of sanity and lost my mind in the process. I, I can't explain it. All I can say is that I was lucky to be alive and with my mind intact. I lifted my sight and saw the position of the sun. It's almost noon. Time for the last session of Mandasama's feeding. Tomorrow, I'll head back immediately. Wait for me mom, dad, Wani-san. Third POV. Meanwhile, Kakashi and Team 7 were just back from the Land of Wave. They stopped by the Ishiraku Raymond stall and ate their fill. Seeing the steam that came out from the port and the smoke from the cigarette of another guest, Kakashi suddenly remembered the incident a few years back. The Hokage himself leads a mission along with his Anbu to capture Orochimaru at one of his many caches. Avoiding a battle, Orochimaru escaped from the man who once was his teacher, putting himself on the run in the process. On the way to the country's border, Orochimaru suffers an attack from Kakashi, which critically injured Orochimaru in the resulting attack. Sent by Danzo, Kino Dash now better known as Yamato was on his way to a venue to help Orochimaru cross the Land of Fire's border. But once at the place where he should wait for Orochimaru, Yamato found a very peculiar clan who lives there to serve Orochimaru. One of its members, a young girl, is convinced that Yamato is her long-lost brother, Tenzo. Kakashi remembered that it was the Aburi clan, the clan that was slaughtered by Orochimaru. The entire clan, excluding a girl named Yukimi, was captured and then killed off by Orochimaru in his disgusting attempts to find a capable way of bestowing him with their bloodline limit. I wonder how's that girl doing Kakashi? Let out a big sigh as he continued to wait for his Raymond to be made. Um, everyone you have to see this Eno gulped her saliva, cold sweat tricked down on her back. Chaoji and Shikamaru were intrigued, Eno then shared her vision with them. In their mind, there was the Oka forest of the Oka village from a bird's point of view. In the middle of the forest, colossal-sized snake trails were clearly seen. Surprised by Eno's findings, they tried to draw a conclusion from the information they possessed. First, it's 90% certain that the beasts come to this village either to escape from that god knows what creature. Second, we're certain that's a snake trail or a reptilian one from some of the scale it left on its wake. Third, that giant thing's current location is currently unknown. Shikamaru bit his finger as he said this. He was nervous, just like his teammate because of their lack of information. Let's report to Asuma Sensei first. It can't be as simple as we thought. Ino released her technique as she recovered some of her chakras. It's getting complicated, Chaoji frowned as he tried to process their current clues so far. I want a beef yudin. From its size, the color of the scales at left, and the havoc it causes. I can only guess that it was Manda, the summoned creature of Orochimaru of the Sanin. I have yet to know another reptilian creature that is as big as him. A frown was seen on Asuma's face, he would not forget his old man's disciple summoned creature. He was there when the trio Sanin showed their current summoned creatures to his old man, and he literally pissed his pants at that time from the scary vibe that Manda exuded. What? He was nothing but a little brat at that time. Ko and Dean were silent, they tried to formulate a solution in their mind before they started to act. 
If it really is the doing of Orochimaru of the Sanin, then it can't be simple. I suspect these beasts outbreak and the finding of Kaiubi's chakra must be closely interlinked. Our easiest method is to apprehend the key suspect dash the doctor, Shino and interrogate him. Ko said his frown was yet to cease from his face. Our other method is to go to the forest and look for another clue there. Isuma added that even though he was not sure with his own words, he knew it was too dangerous. If it was really Orochimaru and Manda. Dean San, do you have any idea? Asuma turned his head and asked Dean. When you're in a pinch, you can always ask Anara for a piece of advice, especially a seasoned one like Dean. If it's their S class criminal Orochimaru, then we don't stand a chance against him. I'm not looking down on our capabilities, rather, he's really a cunning person. As we know, he's a ruthless, sly, and resourceful individual. If it's really Orochimaru, I bet he already knows our situation, and already brews a plan against us. Dean frowned, he's a highly cautious person. This current mission was all about investigation, and if there's a chance to retrieve the Kaiubi Chakra, then they'll do it. If not, then they'll destroy it. And if the enemy was out of their league, they had to retreat with any piece of information at hand. Asuma and Ko frowned, like it or not, what Dean said was likely to be the truth. Orochimaru held the Sanin title not only for show, he earned it by his own capabilities. The three Sanin was once able to hold their ground against Hanzo the Salamander. During the Second Shinobi World War, Hanzo fought some of Kanoha's forces, with Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru being the only survivors. As a reward for this accomplishment, Hanzo named the trio as Kanova's Sanin, and told them to refer to themselves as such, in exchange for letting them live. For the ignorant people, this story sounded like the three Sanin were weak and barely able to survive against a single person. This statement was true, except they're not against any other people. It's Hanzo the Salamander himself that once slaughtered his way and carved his name in the Anal of History, and hailed as the demigod as a testament of his strength. And Orochimaru, as young as he was at that time, was able to survive a battle against him. Of the three Sanin, he's one that never gambles his chance. He always prepared everything before he acted, he was ruthless even with his own self. Some might say that the title was Hanzo's way of mocking the trio's loss, but Dean vehemently believes that it was a testament to their ability to survive against the strongest of that era, and that translated to the proof of their strength and prowess. They knew this fact, and no one present was stupid enough to underestimate someone with such capabilities. Alright, as a precaution, we'll move in a group of dashis moving. Shino went toward a ruined temple east of the village. As Asuma wants to explain their strategy, Shikamaru cuts him off with a sudden report. Looking at their current chance, investigating through this Shino guy was the best shot they could get. They can't help it. That's how terrifying the terror of Orochimaru of the Sanin was. They'll throw their life for nothing at all without ample preparation by pitting themselves against him. Of course, it's all just an assumption. But a safer alternative was presented before them. And if they did not take that alternative, it's not called a brave act, it's called an idiot act. We split into three groups. Eno, you're to follow Dean San. Watch our back, and provide ranged support. Shikamaru, you're with Chaoji and took the southern route and cut his escape path. I'll take the front line with Kosan. Kosan, please seal his tonketsu if possible later. I'll distract and keep him busy. This mission is getting out of hand, we'll have to act and apprehend him soon. See Sensei Asuma Sensei the snake Ino said. Her lips trembled and lost their color. But the snake what now just as Asuma was about to execute the plan, Ino interrupted him. He's starting to get annoyed with various things that suddenly popped up. Without further ado, Asuma sighed as he touched Ino's left shoulder for Ino to share the image with him, and she did exactly that. It's really him Manda, Asuma gasped, his eyes went wide, and his pupils dilated. And he's bigger than before, way bigger. Chaoji, POV. After we made sure that it was Manda in the forest, Asuma Sensei sent another report to the Hokage, and we proceeded to secure this Shino guy. Shikamaru and I went onto the southern route in case he escaped through this route. We already investigated the ruin before, and we knew there were only two routes that could be used, with Asuma Sensei and Ko San blitzing through the main path while we guarding this route. I hope that it's enough to ensure our success in apprehending him. Or, Chaoji, why do you think our first mission besides the D-ranked one turned out to be this complicated? I bet the difficulty of this mission already escalated beyond B-grade. I raised my eyebrows at Shikamaru. I agreed with his piece about the difficulty of the mission. If you ask that to me, Shikamaru, who am I supposed to ask? I sighed, this mission really getting out of hand. What a drag we waited for some time and sounds of battle could be heard, and by the sound of it, the battle was intense. I can't believe it, an elderly was able to fight two Janin at once. I got it that Shino was a former shinobi himself, and I guess I underestimated him too much. Say, Shikamaru, what do you think the Kayubi Chakra will be used for? Hearing my question, Shikamaru's forehead creased. He took a deep breath before saying, 
Whatever this Shino person wants the Kaiwubi Chakra for, it's our mission to stop him. As for what the Kaiwubi Chakra could be used for, I'm not sure about it myself. Looking back at Naruto, it has healing properties of some sort. And based on what we felt from it, those chakras carrying a malevolent berserk aura. As if proving what Shikamaru said, we felt pressure from the battle site. From the aura that it emanated, we felt a strong negative emotion. Speak of the devil, and he shall come Shikamaru muttered lowly. Then clicked his tongue. We help, I said with an unrefutable tone, which was answered by a nod from Shikamaru. Let's go assume a POV. Ko-san and I were looking at the target, and as we approached him a few kunais suddenly flew toward us. I immediately pulled my trench knife to deflect the incoming kunais. As we deflected the kunais, another wave of kunais flew without giving us any chance to prepare ourselves. This went on for a minute, until we realized that this wave wouldn't stop anytime soon. I don't think this gonna end. Bayakigan. Ko-san immediately activated his clan's Kekai Jenkai. The Bayakigan. There are several of them, approximately 30 in total. They held something in their hand, a kind of machine that fired kunai rapidly. This is an ambush. Ko-san, flare the signal to retreat. Ko-san took his signal flare to give the other an alert. But, unfortunately for us, as he took out the flare, a kunai hit the flare and made it fly out of Ko-san's hand. Damn. As soon as I took notice that the signal flare was dropped, I told Ko-san to retreat, then we flickered away from the battle site. But, before we were able to pass through the encirclement, a blast of malevolent aura took us by surprise. They all retreated. Ko-san frowned. Our enemies have suddenly retreated. And I bet my whole saving that this is not part of good news fortunately. The kunai's hell was stopped along with the enemy's retreat, when the malevolent aura spread. I know whatever this thing that exuded this kind of aura, definitely did not come in peace. Is this part of the trap that they prepared for us? Who is this Shino anyway? I sighed. I wondered why this ordinary beast extermination mission turned into an A-ranked strategist item retrieval mission. And I predict it will soon turn into an S-ranked secret mission. Growl. That's one heck of a loud roar Asuma san two of your students are on their way here. The good part is they decimated the retreating enemies on their path, and the bad part is. Ko-san turned his head toward me and grimly said, There's a strong creature from inside of the ruin, and its chakra signature has some resemblance to the Kayubi's chakra. Although it's not as massive as the Kayubi, its chakra is as dense and how do I say it, it's horrifying to look at. It's dark in color and flows in a chaotic pattern. After I heard Ko-san in response, I loosened my neck, brandished my trench knife, and whispered, Hien I flow my chakra into my trench knives to augment the cutting power of its blades. A dense blade of chakra is formed around the knives, extending its reach. I transformed my chakra into wind natured chakra, so that my blades became sharp enough to cut through even stone or metal with ease. Not long after, the said creature came outside. It resembles a reddish purple leech with a serpent-like body. On its face, it wears a blank white colored no mask. That has the kanji for zero on its forehead. On its head, it has five thick hair-like strands sprouting from it with four at the top side and one at the bottom side. I have to be serious. This thing smells like bad news. My instinct screamed danger at its presence, and cold sweat unconsciously drenched my back. In tacit understanding, I split up with Kosan. I rushed to its right side while he jumped to its left. With a twist of my hand, I raised my left trench knife and swung it downward aiming at its side. While at it, Kosan coated his hand with chakra and struck that creature with a palm. To a surprise, that creature sprouted a few hands from its body and redirected our attack with them followed by a strike to our body as a counter. For a moment there, I felt many emotions slightly well up inside me and from Kosan's expression, I bet he too felt the same. And with our experience, we precisely know that it's not us, it was this thing's influence. This is bad, contact with it can influence the emotion. After we stabilized our position, Kosen hit one of his Tenketsu points. To my surprise, a dark colored chakra escaped from the said Tenketsu point through his ball. It tried to corrupt our mind. This thing is getting more dangerous the more we know it. Clap clap clap, it seems you two already met Riyabi. This baby reacts better with the Kaiwubi chakra than I thought. And you Shinobis from Kanoha will be the perfect lab rat to test this baby's ability. From the ruined entrance, Shino confidently stepped out. Hang on well, friends from Kanoha. The real thing has just begun. Chaoji, POV. We were on our way to Asuma Sensei's location when we met a few groups of foreign Shinobis. Without announcing who they were, they attacked us with some weird things that rapidly shot Kunais at us. Some of them also threw a few Jutsus at us. Shikamaru and I were, of course, retaliating against them. Shikamaru incapacitated them in a flash with his Black Lily, which was derived from the Shadow Sewing technique, and pulled them together, while I tried my best to quickly decimate them with my multi-size and human bullet tank technique. Koro Higanbana no Jutsu. Yubambika no Jutsu. Shikamaru binds all of the opponents with his shadow sewing technique, then pulls them together in one area. Then I enlarge my body with a multi-size technique, and smash them with a human bullet tank technique like a bowling ball, smashing the pins. It's one of our Ino Shikacho formation, it would be more effective if the mind disturbance technique was performed to disorient the opponents. 
Anyway, it's good that we're not surrounded yet, and able to detect them before we're caught off guard. And to finish the deed, we attack the enemies that were not trapped by Shikamaru's technique. We're able to finish them in a couple of minutes. Although it sounds easy, what we did earlier by no means was easy. It involved delicate timing and control by Shikamaru. Great chemistry and trust between Shikamaru and me, also a decisive act to execute the technique. One miss and a single opponent would be able to finish us with a mere kunai to a vital. For example, what if Shikamaru did not manage to hold all of the nearby enemies in place, and I rushed to them to attack? Well, they would just dodge my attack and surround me, then turn me into a makeshift porcupine. We rushed into the ruin where Asuma Sensei was supposed to be, and there we saw from some distance away. Asuma Sensei bruised blood leaked from the corner of his mouth, while his nose looked broken, and his expression was grim. Beside him was Kosan, his complexion was no better. His left hand even dangled on his side. It seems that the bone of his hand was broken. They were facing a strange creature. It was a leech-like creature with some kind of mask on its supposed face, and tentacles sprouted from its body. We saw they confronted the leech, and managed to cut a few of its tentacles and even its body more than once. But it kept healing and regenerating at a rapid pace. In front of one of the ruined temple's entrances, we also spotted a single person who looked similar to the Shino guy that we were supposed to take. But instead of an elderly man that we knew, we saw a man in his mid-thirties. Compared to before, his hair and beard grew wild and much longer, as well as blackening in color. His eyebrows became black and wildly thicker. His muscles greatly expanded, which caused his former appearance like a matchstick compared to this one. He's barrachested, with only shreds of a sleeve around his wrists. All this made him look younger and much more physically fit. The creases under his eyes and the dark bags around them also seemed to have disappeared. He stood from an elevated platform and watched the confrontation between the leech and Asuma Sensei, along with Kosan. His face made an excited expression like a child that just found his favorite toys. We watched them in silence from afar. From what we saw, if we interfered recklessly we might become a dead weight to Sensei and Kosen. They looked like they were in a disadvantageous position, and indeed they were. Minutes later, we felt Eno's and Dean Sen's presence approaching us. We rendezvous a bit far from the battle site, but from here we can clearly see what happened there due to its elevated position. We told Dean Sen about what we knew and asked him about the next plan. His rank is higher than ours, and it is a must for a chain of command to remain intact while on a mission, especially in an urgent situation like this. Our main objective remains the same. It's to apprehend this person named Shino. Was silent, no one answered him. We can't help it, we're worried about a sensei. Seeing us like this, Dean Sen understood us inside. Kids, what a drag look here kiddos, Asuma Sen is not a weak person. In fact, he's the strongest among us and that's crystal clear. He's not chosen as one of the 12 guardians of the fire country for nothing. What we need to do is either create an opening for him and Kosan, or directly strike at our target, Shino, and then retreat to wait for more reinforcement from the village. Option 1 is a high risk one, because we're yet to know the full capabilities of that creature. And although we also don't know our target's full capabilities, at least we won't bother Asuma San and Kosan. So, we're going with the second option, any objection. We silently shook our heads, this mission was out of our league. Dean San's ability to plan and discern our next step is an eye-opener for us. No matter how hard we trained, the experience is the true best teacher. Then we briefly listened to Dean San's plan, and immediately circled around the area to apprehend our target from his blind side. We silently approach him, and Dean San and Shikamaru directly bind the target with their clan's technique. Kajimane no Jutsu, Cage Kubishibari no Jutsu. Two lines of shadows rapidly extended from Dean Sans and Shikamaru's shadows. One line melded with the target's shadow, while the other climbed on our target's body and strangled him. In tandem, I rushed and flipped my body forming a somersault, then hit Shino's head downward with my right foot. Barista Swirl. It's a move that I'm familiar with since my past life. I can do it even with my eyes closed. The floor below him was blasted, and he fell down, on another side. The purple leech turned its head and growled deeply. Just then, suddenly it rushed toward us. Its sudden acceleration was alarming, and neither Asuma Sensei nor Kosan was able to react before it rushed toward us. We braced ourselves, in the spur of the moment I enlarged myself to shield Shikamaru and Ino from the impact, while Dean Sen jumped in front of me, and used an Earth-style technique to summon a wall in front of us. Silly me. Why have I endangered myself when there's a better option to use ninjutsu instead? The leech continued to get closer to us until Kaboom Roar. A deep growl was released by Riaibi. He was rushing to fulfill Shino's call. Riaibi was a creature with might compared to some of the tailed beasts. But he wasn't one that was made entirely from chakra. No, he was just a chakra beast, a serpentine leech. Once upon a time, he was able to attain enlightenment, and was about to ascend to become a sage under the great chakra tree. He dreamt about building his own tribe, and share the stage with the current 12 sage clan, to keep the balance of the world. But alas, just as he was about to succeed, he was corrupted by the negativity of the world. At that time, a woman who proclaimed herself as a goddess, washed the land with the blood of her enemies. The world was oppressed by her iron fist, she ruled by fear from her subject. 
Thus, he failed to ascend because of the corrupted state of the world, and instead, in his attempt to ascend, he went rampage and absorbed a minuscule part her chakra, making himself become an incomplete tailed beast of some sort. He hides from the world and tries to protect his sanity from the negative energies inside him. From time to time he almost manages to clear himself from the negative energies. Unfortunately, war kept happening on the land, and the negativity of the world continued to thicken and corrupt him further. His hope and dream was decimated along with the fall of the 12 great sage clan, which was slaughtered by the hand of the goddess herself. Currently, he is mainly made from two things, chakra and negative natural energy, which coincidentally was able to mix inside him to become dark chakras. He tried and tried to fix himself, but only to be faced with the cruel reality of failure after failure. Finally, in his desperation he went and begged for help from a man who managed to create nine creatures, similar to his current self. Alas, the man saw him as a threat and sealed him away from the world. It was only many years later that he was partly freed from the seal by a person named Shino. Shino tried to use Ryabi's power to build his hidden village and army, to take revenge and stop the war. Or so he said. No, Ryabi was yet to be freed entirely. From time to time his consciousness went into slumber and his power moved by itself based on instinct, and sought any negativity in the world to empower it further. And subsequently, he follows his own attempt to cleanse himself, forming a seemingly never-ending cycle, with his continuous effort to purge the negative energy from him. And now, Ryabi just woke up from another slumber, and Shino said that he needs to protect his subordinates from the enemy's attack. I need your power to protect them, he said. Ryabi rushed immediately to Shino while avoiding obstacles around. Shino then absorbed him and went into a berserk-like state. His wounds healed, and his already ripped body became even bulkier and his long hair fluttered like they were blown by the wind. Yes, this is it below the ruined place. Shino clenched his fist and grinned madly. His eyes shone with weird light that made him look eerie. This is the power that I long for. Kuahaha Dashi laughed and laughed, then he stopped abruptly and lifted his head. He squinted his eyes and jumped. With this, I'll flatten Kanoha then the world, and we will build a whole new dynasty from its ashes. Meanwhile, outside of the ruins, all of the Kanoha's shinobis were taking a defensive stance and preparing a counter for the enemy's attack. Asuma opened his mouth and gave another rapid series of instructions. Dean-san and Shikamaru restrict his movement as best as you can. Ino, use your clan technique to disturb his focus. Chaoji uses a fire-style jutsu for an attack. Do not approach him to have a melee combat, Chaoji. I repeat, do not approach him to engage in melee. I'll use a wind-style jutsu to empower your fire jutsu further, and I'll be the one to confront him. Ko-san, be ready to protect the kids. Be ready, all of you. Not long after, Shino emerged to the ground and then stood arrogantly facing them. He now stood with his body significantly taller than before, with a height almost reaching 9 feet. His muscles looked sturdy like it was made from steel, and his aura screamed power and madness. Now, seeing that Shino showed himself, Asuma immediately gave a command to start their assault. Cage Nui no Jutsu. Lines of shadow stretched from Dawn and Shikamaru, effectively bound him like a fighter that constricted its prey. Shintenshin no Jutsu. Waves of chakra swept over him like a tide, and tried to latch into his mind to take his consciousness over, courtesy of Ino. Katen. Goka kick no Jutsu. Fire stream blew from Chaoji's mouth and shot towards Shino. Fusen. Maichimonji. Just then, Asuma slashed horizontally towards Shino's direction from behind Chaoji, and produced a crescentship wind blade. Along the way, the wind blade fused with the fire stream, creating a sharp wind blade that wrapped with fire. At a glance, the wind blade looked like a pair of avian wings with the fire as its feathers. The bird-like wind blade flew past its target, Shino, and decapitated his body in his stomach. Does it work? Ino whispered full of hope. Silence reigned the area. No one moved. Even the wind ceased to blow. Then do you seriously think that your punny attack will affect me? Boom, a blast of dark chakra exploded with Shino as its center. Do you really think that I can be defeated? Creak the ground floor was fractured, forming spider cracks from the pressure Shino gave with his malevolent aura. Naive Shino stretched his hand and swung it outward. The pile of rubbles from the previous collision was lifted from the ground and shot toward them like a hail of bullets. Dean used an earth technique to shield himself and Shikamaru. While Ko used the 8 trigram palm, revolving heaven technique to protect the rest. Shino's outstretched hand then raised as he clenched his fist. A multitude of tan-colored arms sprouted from the ground, and grabbed Dean and Shikamaru from behind, as they were caught off guard. Oh no, you're a nuisance. The duo Nara gritted their teeth as their face paled, these hands were able to absorb chakra. Your annoying more hands sprouted from the ground and grabbed Ino, while Chaoji, Asuma, and Ko were ready, and slashed the approaching hands with their respective knife and kunai. Now there are no more binding and spiritual attacks against me. 
Asuma immediately instructed Chaoji to release the captured ones, while he and Ko confronted Shino. As Ko opened his palm and concentrated chakra on it, Shino suddenly appeared in front of him with his fist clenched, and a large amount of dark chakra concentrated around it. Everything was so sudden that Ko was not able to properly respond to it. Kasuken. Boom with a loud booming sound, Shino's fist hit and unleashed a powerful and focused shock wave toward Ko's abdomen which effectively caused tremendous internal damage to Ko. Blurg Ko threw off backward and blasted through several walls, before he stopped and spewed blood from his mouth. Pathetic Kanoha insect. Shino snickered, he turned his head toward Asuma, only to be greeted with a chakra-coated trench knife swung toward his face. Yami no Nami reflexically, Shino bled his dark chakra outward forming a widespread wave of dark chakra, which knocked Asuma backward. Filthy cockroach Shino formed another fist and concentrated another large amount of dark chakra around it. Die. Kasuken. Asuma gritted his teeth and immediately substituted himself with nearby rubble to avoid Shino's attack. His pupils dilated with fear and shock. That was close with a grim expression, Asuma took a stance. It seems that I have to resort to it his left hand moved to make a half ram seal, and then he extended his right hand down with his palm parallel to the ground. His eyes sharpened, and he exhaled as he tried to be focused. Behind him, a golden colored pristine spirit of the thousand armed bodhisattva was summoned. It was seated in a lotus position with a blooming lotus in one hand and a vase in another. Raigo, Senjusatsu, too slow. Kaboom, Raigo, Senjusatsu, too slow. Shino immediately dashed and swung his fist to hit Asuma with his kasuken. The dark chakra was concentrated, and created a huge blast when it hit. Alas, his fist did not hit Asuma as he intended. Instead, he was blocked by a large golden colored palm that blew back upon impact with his fist. Shino was relentless. He immediately dashed toward Asuma again in an attempt to assault him. He swung his fist left and right only to be blocked by several more golden palms. Good. It seems that even though you're an insect, you're a tough one. But I wonder if you recognize this. The dark chakra that Shino emitted began to retract, but the pressure in the air became heavier instead. Shino's skin gradually reddens as his blood flow accelerates and his veins apparent from his skin. Could it be Boom Shino's aura bled five times, and again condensed around his body? He exhaled and cackled madly. Hachiman, Toman, impossible. As soon as pupils dilated, he was full of disbelief. Eight gates technique more over the fifth gate. Ha ha ha. I'm glad you have eyes that are able to recognize this masterpiece. That eternal Jen in Shaw was a genius. Shino rushed while he kept cackling weirdly, his eyes shone with a mad gleam. Die. Your death is inevitable. Asuma was silent. He willed some hands to shield himself from Shino's assault, and some more hands balled into a fist that rushed to hit his opponent. How? Is there a traitor among Kanoha's upper echelon? Meanwhile, along with booming sounds of attacks on the surrounding, Chaoji managed to free others from the hand spawn. He wants to rush back to help Asuma but is prevented from doing so by Dean, and instead, he is commanded to secure Ko and wait for the right moment to help. While Dean, Shikamaru, and Ino recovering their lost chakra, Chaoji rushed to Ko, and gently piggybacked him to where the others were. They took shelter behind some big rubble to shield them from the impact of the battle. I'm still weak, Chaoji clenched his fist hard. Blood could be seen seeping from his hand. Frustration was apparent from the way he looked, and the same could be said for both Ino and Shikamaru. Still not enough. An occasional flash of chakras and the booming sound from some impacts were apparent as the battle went on. Not enough. Then, Hachiman, Kamen. Shino's aura became even denser as he activated the sixth gate of the eight gates, the gate of view. His eyes began to slightly darken, and his muscles became tenser as he increased his body strength. Ha 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 ha, I am immortal. This supposed to be a forbidden technique is just another technique in my arsenal. Raigo, aim in response to Shino's provocation, Asuma used another technique to begin his offense. The hands of the thousand hand bodhisattva figure behind him were raised and directed its palms towards Shino. Just then, its thousand palms were slamming downwards. From a glance, it looked like golden rain. But, instead of water, it was giant palms that poured like crazy. Asuma's eyes sharpened as he controlled the movement of the thousand hand bodhisattva, golden colored chakra enveloping his body. The palms were kept slamming downwards. Aura, 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 Uriah. Responding to Asuma's assault, Shino grinned as he threw attacks of his own. That matched with Asuma's. Muda, 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 Far from the two battles, Chaoji and the others saw the epic battle between Asuma and Shino, and wondered how they could become that strong. One side with a huge figure seated behind him, rained numerous palms toward his opponent, while on the enemy's side, there was a person with abnormal strength, who was able to use a forbidden technique with seemingly no consequence. Though from the blaring words from Shino, Chaoji now know that this forbidden technique was created by a shinobi from Kanoha, the one he called Eternal Genin. Honestly, Chaoji feels envious of their strength, and he craved for the way to improve. I'll look into it later meanwhile. 
golden palms and purple black fists continuously clash without pause. At the umpteenth clash, both Asuma and Shino jumped back to prepare for their next bout. Raigo, yoked dash the bodhisattva figure opened its mouth wide, its thousand hands formed a circle behind its body, and emitted a soft golden light from its palms. Hachiman, Kaiman. Just then, Shino released the seventh gate and unlike before, Shino's body compressed and became slightly smaller at seven feet tall. Contrary to his smaller physique, his aura became even heavier and denser. Not enough, again. Hachiman, Shimon. The eighth gate was released and Shino's skin was cracked and his eyes became fully dark grey color. His long black hair was raised to fine gravity. You all will die. Cho Kasuken. Dark chakra condensed into a sphere shape on Shino's hand, and swelled like a tornado. One Asuma's eyes were full of determination, his hands moved to make a horse hand seal. Taiho. Blinding lights were shot from the mouth of the thousand hand bodhisattva. Behind the rubbles further away, Dean who just recovered his chakra, and Ko who just gained consciousness were aghast. With the meager chakras they had left, both Dean and Ko hastily made a burrow, and dragged the others into it as a means of protection. Aurea. Advance. Mutada. Die. From a bird's eye view, the place where Asuma and Shino do battle, is like a wasteland of death, with charred ground filling the land. Nothing in view besides some small pieces of rubble here and there. Silence filled the area. Not long after, the still environment was broken by blasted ruins that covered a hole in the ground. From it, three impatient teenagers were rushed out. Where's Sensei? Ino said while fidgeting, she was panicked. Control yourself Ino. Stay here and use your body replacement technique on an animal, and search for Sensei below some rubbles. I'll stand guard here to keep you. Dean San, and Ko San safe. Shikamaru said his playful and lazy demeanor was gone at this instance to seriously secure their sensei. I'll look out for sensei then. Chaoji immediately dashed while keeping an eye on the surroundings to find Asuma. I'll have to learn one sensory technique or two after this. No one used the shadow clone technique or anything similar. Their physical and mental toll was at the limit already. Minutes passed and instead of Asuma, Chaji found Shino's shriveled figure cackling madly in the center of a huge crater. Shino stood while gazing at the afternoon sky, while continuously whispering under his breath things along the lines of I will rule the world, all hell the sky, and Kanoha will be destroyed. Didn't want to take a risk, Chaji immediately swallowed a soldier pill to slightly recover his chakra, then activated his strongest technique to date, butterfly mode, and launched an attack towards Shino. Shomodo. Chaji's body shrunk rapidly, revealing the chisel muscle that he got from hell mode training and hidden behind his excess fat. His fat turned into chakra that circulated inside him and then shaped into two large butterfly wings on his back. His wings flapped as he accelerated further. He concentrated his whole chakra into his fist, including from his wings. This technique was originally named the butterfly bullet bombing technique or Choden Bakujeki, but Chaoji took it one step further and added fire nature transformation into it, making it more deadly. The chakra on his hand was set ablaze, fire enveloped his whole right arm as he swung his fist. Katen, hiking crimson colored fire burned the air as it shot toward its target, Shino. The fire menacingly blazed like a mighty crimson dragon among the wasteland. Chaoji left very little chakra on himself as he used the rest to perform this attack. As Chaoji landed, his countenance was pale as a sheet as he staggered to stand, and his vision blurred. He swallowed another soldier pill into his mouth, and in his blurred vision, he saw a charred body where Shino previously stood. He let out a breath of relief that he didn't know he held, as he let his body fell seated on the ground to catch a breath and recover some chakra. Unknown to him, from the charred remains, wisps of a dark purple substance emerged and slowly crept to him, then seeped into his body as he recovered some energy and chakra. Perhaps it was because his physical and mental burden already passed its limits or perhaps because of another reason, Chaoji fell into an unconscious state and plopped down not far from Shino's corpse. When the sun began to set and night approaches, the reinforcement from Kanoha finally arrives. They found Asuma's unconscious body on the other side of the huge crater and they escorted all of the members of Team 10 plus Dean and Ko. Then they took Shino's shriveled and charred body back to Kanoha. Days later, they arrived at Kanoha. On the exact date when the Kanoha Grand Sports Festival was held, alas, Team 10 was not able to participate, as they had to report their mission to the Hokage, and went home to rest further for a couple more days. In the meantime, Chaoji was wallowing in misery. He was in despair as he discovered something that plunged him into an abyss of hopelessness. Something really bad, hey, hey, did you hear? A youthful boy wearing a green spandex suit was seen doing a handstand push-up on a tree branch. Sweat drenched his whole body, as he forced himself past his limits. For the first time in a few years, there will be many rookies in this year's tune-in exam. Ho ho so what? A girl replied, her black hair tied in two Chinese-style buns on her head, with short fringe bangs framing her face. She wore a pink sleeveless kipao-style blouse with white flowers motive on her shoulder. Three of them are the students of Kakashi, and another three are the Ino Shikacho combo. Lee answered with a hand folded onto his back. He now did a one-handed handstand push-up. This exam might be interesting this year. 
said a boy who wore a beige-colored shirt with a dull blue shirt beneath that, coupled with dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals, and wrap bandages around his right arm, chest, and right leg. If you said that, then it might be really become interesting, Niji-san. By the way, let's have a lunch, Tenten cutely said, and took a bento box. She gave the bento box to Niji with a faint blush on her face. Don't forget about me, Tenten. Lee did a backflip from his handstand position and shouted, Lee, don't you have 200 more push-ups? Ah, I forgot. Then I'll join you guys after I'm done with the 200 plus another 100 handstand push-ups with each hand as a punishment. Team 10 was currently having their lunch together in the Akamichi restaurant for the first time, after their mission finished. Asuma was mostly healed and already healthy enough to move around the village and do some light ninja activities, though he was not smoking like he usually does today, courtesy of his lover, Koronai. How do you three feel? Do you get enough rest? Good enough? I'm good. I'm miserable. They ate their favorite dishes, almost everyone was in a good mood even Shikamaru was smiling, and not as laid back as he usually was. Oddly, it was Chaoji who was feeling gloomy. Stop complaining, Chaoji. You look better this way, I guarantee. Why do you want to be fat anyway? Ino said grudgingly. She was quite surprised when she saw the ripped Chaoji for the first time. He was way more attractive. Chaoji was currently muscular. He wore a sweatshirt that clearly showed his line of muscles with some armor on his body and limbs. His hair was cut and styled a bit messy on the right, but combed back neatly on the left. His stature is currently slightly taller than it was when he was on the previous mission. His light brown hair and his strong gaze gave people charismatic feelings. He's not the lean or the skinny kind, courtesy of his nutritious and humongous amount of protein he consumed. Neither Chaoji is overly buff as he is still in his early teenager age. Though for a kid in his early teens, he could be said to have a overly good muscular body. You won't understand, woman. Fat is a man's romance dash. No, it's not, Asuma interjected. But it's indeed a problem. Can you use your calorie control technique? Is there a problem when you use your clan's technique? Ha, huh, I can use my clan's techniques just fine. But, no matter how many times I eat, the nutrition directly turns into chakra and not fats. My physique has gotten stronger every single time I eat. My chakra also got denser. Chaji's expression was gloomy, with no happiness apparent, in spite of the advantage he has. It's like there's a dark cloud floating above him. I event tried to eat a whole stall worth of sweets, fries, and lots of the others. Well, no problem then. We'll check later. Asuma reached for his pouch and took three slips of paper. Here are your applications. Huh? Applications for what? Eno peeled her eyes from Chaoji's now gorgeous figure and inquired her sensei. Tune an exam of course. What else? Beauty contest. Asuma rolled his eyes and his hand reached his hands to his chest pocket. Shit, I forget that Kuro and I took all of my cigarettes. Shikamaru eyed Eno and Chaoji from the side. With their looks, there's little chance that they're not winning it. If they really participate tune an exam, there will be another participant from other villages, right? Chaji's eyes regain some of their lost light. I bet there's going to be a lot of strong genins participating in the exam. I can learn various new stuff. Asuma stood and crossed his arms in front of his chest and turned his body with his back facing his three students. Anyway, those who wish to take the exam should fill and sign those papers and turn them in at room 301 at building B of the academy. By 4 p.m., at the latest tomorrow, he waved his hand as he walked away from their table. The next day, good morning Shikamaru greeted both Chaoji and Ino while yawning, a four-foot katana strapped diagonally on his back. Good morning, too. Yo, what's up? Both Ino and Chaoji replied with some enthusiasm. Chaoji lifted his eyebrows as he saw the katana behind Shikamaru. Shikamaru, realizing Chaoji's gaze onto his newly brought weapon explained, I was trying various new stuff these few days. I feel that I'm kinda comfortable with this katana. Chaoji and Ino shrugged. The trio then walked into the exam site to turn their applications in together. Near the academy building, various people both from Kanoha and outside of Kanoha were seen. Some were nervous, some seemed jittery, while others mostly appeared calm. As they walked the stairs of the building, they noticed something. Jinjutsu. Ino was the first to react, and she dispelled the Jinjutsu from the three of them. Ho ho they want to confuse us. They want us to think that the next floor is the third floor. Let's go. Ino grinned, she marched full of spirit. Chaji and Shikamaru looked at each other, surprised and happy at their friend's improvement in Jinjutsu. After they reached the second floor, they passed a crowd full of genins when they were on their way to the third floor. Ha! Huh. Do you plan to take the Chunin exam with just that? You better quit now. Everyone's eyes were centered on one personally. Please, let us throw dash one of the participants. Tenten was asking two men with Kanoha headbands, who stood guard in front of a door, with number 301 above it. But, before she was able to finish her words, she was slapped by one of them. Ino wanted to approach her, 
but Chao Ji held her by her arm. Let's go. I don't want to join this drama. It's annoying. But, Eno hesitated before sighing and giving up her attempt to stick her nose in another's business. The trio then continued their little travel to the real room 301. When they arrived, they handed in their applications and waited for a while. There's still more than 40 minutes before the meeting begins. I'm gonna walk around for a while. Chao Ji walked out of the room. He was bored and went to explore some more to meet more Jenins from other villages. Shikamaru just waved his hand as he leaned on the chair and closed his eyes while Ino took a book and read it in the meantime. Hey, you, the emo guy with the dark eyes. Lee was currently called one of the Chunin exam participants from the Kanoa. Who? Me. Ak. How dare you? You thick eyebrows. Lee nodded to the who gave the former answer and flashed his best smile to the latter. Will you fight me? Right here. Right now. Lee looked at the one he challenged. And he stared him right into his eyes. Just then, Chao Ji who was strolling around, currently hidden on the side, decided to watch the events ongoing before him. Like, I thought this going to be interesting. Shame. I didn't bring popcorns though chips are also fine. Chao Ji chuckled as he pried open a pack of potato chips. On the night before the graduation of the academy, inside a rundown apartment, you could see a single window from outside. While most of the windows of the others were still bright from the lamp, there was one window that looked dark. Dark as in without light, and dark as in bleak full of sadness. Behind that window, a pair of eyes could be seen taking a peek at the run-down street below. His eyes glistened with tears, his mouth shut, and his body shivered. Ash Naruto, POV, do you know? I'm not a stranger to the dark even before I was able to understand anything. I was shunned. I didn't know what did I do wrong. I didn't know what my mistake was. I never knew. As far as I can remember, I have never known how comfortable a bed can be. I didn't know how does it feels to have my stomach full of warm foods, nor I know the joy of having someone that I can call a friend. As far as I can remember, there's no light that shone onto me. Hideaway, they say, we don't want your broken parts. Which part of me that actually broken? What sin did I commit that made me deserve to be beaten so badly? I, I just want to be loved, to be safe from harm, to be accepted for who I am. Is that really a sin? Oftentimes I saw men, women, and kids around my age go together. They laugh, they talk, they are together. What differentiates between me and them? Why do they have loving families? And I don't why. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars, yes. I hide them all at least if I tucked away my face. No one would recognize me and hit me with rage in their eyes. They're hurt. They're itchy. They are there as proof that I do not deserve to be loved. My scars. Run away, they say. No one will love you as you are. What else can I do? Fight back. I am but a child, and if I do fight back, there will be more of them that will come and hit me harder than the ones before them. No, I don't want that. It hurts I hated the gaze. They were looking at me like I was something disgusting. Something that meant to be hated. But, I, I won't let them break me down to dust. I want to. There's something that I want to prove. I can't be destroyed like this. I will prove to them that I'm not a demon just like they said. If I succumb to their abuse, then I'll be a loser. And, I don't want to be a loser. I know that there's a place for me at least the old man. The third Hokage came from time to time to protect me. He gave me a small apartment for me to live in. This way I will have a place that I can call home. I know. If I become a Hokage, people will respect me. They will have no choice but to admit that I am a great person. Yes, that's it. That way they will love me, and they won't hit me again. For I am glorious. I will be a Hokage. No amount of obstacles will be able to hinder me. I will surmount the highest mountain between me and my dream. And I will swim in the ocean if it separates me from reaching my destination. Diss me, insult me all you want. I will care no longer. What words? Ha! Huh. Insult me all you want, I've gone through much worse. It's so horrible that any words won't be able to hurt me. I'll drown you with my pranks instead. See that? Is that your shop? What will happen if I set fireworks inside? He he I will not cower under pressure. So what if the world looks down on me? Ha! Huh. Watch me when I stand at the top, no one will hit me again. No one will look at me with a gaze full of hatred. Let the world deny. Let the world reject. I will overcome everything by myself, for I am the one and only Yuzumaki Naruto. The future Hokage. Beep 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 five more minutes. Beep 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 um. What was that dream? Back to sleep. Beep 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 yes yes 09.50a. Crap. I'm late. Sakura-chan would be so angry with me. Today we were supposed to buy some ninja tools and go to the Chunin exam site in the afternoon. That being said, I reached for my jacket and immediately rushed out. Yes. I didn't wash my face. Yes, I didn't brush my teeth. But, so what? Gotta go fast. Sakura-chan is waiting. Third POV. Not far from the gate of Kanoha village, a pale man with a dark mark under his eyes was seen with two persons as his companions. On their forehead was a mark of a new hidden village, Atogaka, known as the Hidden Sound Village. Tenzo, I assume you know what to do, don't you? Yes, Orochimaru-sama. The pale man, Orochimaru disguised himself as one of the exam participants. In front of him, 
a white-haired man suddenly appeared and kneeled toward him. He wore glasses, and different from the others, his headband bore the mark of Kenora. Arachimaru-sama, welcome. Arachimaru nodded his head slightly in response. He then waved his hand before the white-haired man flickered away. Just then, they approached the gate of the village and gained an entry pass for them to keep while they were in Kanoha as an identity card or some sword. Orochimaru gazed at Kanoha with a weird gleam in his eyes. He stretched out his tongue, and he licked his own lips slowly. I can't wait to get that boy's body kuku kuku. Let's take care of that first. As you wish, Orochimaru sama In another part of the village, near the market, a shrill shout from a certain pink-haired girl could be heard. Naruto, you are stink chowji stay for a while. And watch Lee and Sazuka spared for a bit. But even until guys stopped Lee, there was nothing that really piqued his interest. It was only when Lee winked his eyes at Sakura and blew her a kiss that Chaoji got a good laugh for a moment. I guess the Millie So So Chaoji's goofy expression suddenly took a turn and become gloom, as he remembered his last mission, and so am I. He explored the place for a few more minutes to restore his mood then went back into meeting room 301. He sat beside Shikamaru and then took a box of dried mushrooms before he started to gobble them up. It was only moments later that Team 7-Naruto, Sazuka and Sakura came in, followed by Team 8-Kiba, Hinata and Shino- Like the loud person he was, Naruto began to ridicule Sazuka's loss to Lee, regardless of his own loss, followed by Sakura admonishing Naruto then joined by others. The calm environment inside the room was broken and was replaced by a tense atmosphere. Both peoples from Kanova and other villages either irritatingly glanced in their direction or silently glared toward them with subtle killing intent. Stop screaming like a cheerleader, will you? A white-haired man wearing a dark purple shirt with a high collar and a white undershirt, coupled with dark purple pants with a white cloth waistband on him, was approaching them with a stern gaze. This is not a picnic, you rookies just out of the academy, aren't you? Naruto, who was still irritated with Sazuka for some reason, lashed out at that man. He raised his hand and pointed his index finger at that man's face. Listen here, tough guy. Who the hell do you think you are, Databeo? The white-haired man sighed and fixed his glasses position before snickering at Naruto. I'm Kabuto, a Kanoha nin just like you. I'm saying this out of my goodwill. Just look behind you. Naruto and the rest of Team 7 and 8 warily turned their head and shifted their gaze. There, they saw various unfriendly gazes from myriad genins from many places. But, the ones that made them sweat a bit were the gazes from the guys with Hidden Rain Villages genins. Those guys behind you are genins from the Hidden Rain Villages. And you know what? They really have a short fuse. Kabuto shook his head with a helpless expression. Everyone here is nervous about the exam one way or another. You all should quiet down before you cause a scene. Well, I can't blame you all as you're all just clueless rookies. And I too used to be that reckless once. With a shrug of his shoulder, Kabuto helplessly stared at both Team 7 and Team 8. The conversation continued with Kabuto showing them a stack of cards filled with information about the exam participants, and Sazuka asked the information about Gara and Lee. Meanwhile, Team 10 was as silent as they could be. At least that was what could be seen from the outside. But, they're currently having their own discussion regarding the ongoing event through the combination of Shikamaru's and Eno's techniques. While at it, they too eavesdropping the conversation of their fellow Kanova rookies with Kabuto. Is that real? How can he have that kind of information? Eno suspiciously glanced at Kabuto from the corner of her eyes. I suppose that they're real. I don't know about how he got his hands on them though. Chaji answered briefly. But he still put most of his attention on Kabuto's explanation. And just like Lee and Gara, everyone here is the top elite genins of their own villages. This exam isn't going to be easy. Kabuto ended his explanation with a small smile on his lips. That's what I hope. Chaoji grinned silently. Shikamaru lazily glanced at him. While Ino stared at him with a gaze full of determination to give her all. A few days ago, have you healed already, Asuma? A man with thick eyebrows and a bowl-shaped hairstyle. Mike Guy cheerfully greeted Asuma with his own trademark youthful grin. I'm fine and dandy already, don't worry. Asuma shrugged his shoulder and waved Guy's worry dismissively. But, can I ask you a favor later, eyebrows? Ask anything, as long as I can do it. I will try to help you. Guy shouted excitedly. He raised his thumb up and laughed merrily. You ha ha ha. What are you two talking about? Me. Why are you laughing like that? A spiky white haired man with a mask on his face and a slanted Kanoha headband on his head was approaching them from behind. He raised his hand and greeted them. Yo, how do you do, Asuma? Guy. Kakashi. What are you doing here? Are you here to assign your team to the Chunin exam? Mike Guy was mildly surprised to see Kakashi there. Although you're my eternal rival, this is not going to be easy. You're rushing things. Kakashi answered with his silence and just glanced at Asuma. Don't look at me like that, Kakashi. My team is full of monsters, you know. Although it's true that the Jinchuriki boy and the Achiha boy are on your team, 
They are yet to be mature, unlike mine. Asuma shook his head helplessly. I know you know both Kakashi and Gai's side. They were among the few that rushed to be the reinforcement for Asuma and his team in the previous mission. And they're beyond surprised after both hearing their exploit and seeing their mad training attitude during their journey back to Kanoha. Yes, they were not training as hard as Mike Guy, but he was a wonder of nature. They were way above their peers. It was a miracle you're all able to survive and complete the mission under that circumstance. Kakashi said as he took out his precious book. It was mostly a luck that do the wonder. Asuma sighed. He scratched his back head. How do I say this? That guy's raw power far beyond mine. And we also traped in an ambus. The later was handled well by the kids. But the former were lucky that he lost his mind as he got drunk with his rush of power. Asuma's eyes stared at the sky while his stretch palm balled into a fist. Another big plus for us was that guy clearly was not a combat shinobi. Perhaps he was one or perhaps he was not, but his move clearly rigid and looks untrained. Kakashi and Guy went silent when they heard their friend's story. They then proceed to the Hokage office to fulfill his summon and start their meeting regarding the Chunin exam. He's shaking. He is one a bet why he's shaking so much. Ino, Chaoji, and Shikamaru were looking at Naruto's figure. He was currently shaking on his boots. After he heard Kabuto's explanation, a thousand Ryo, he scared senseless. Ino smirked as she threw her bed, unaware that his two teammates' eyes were shining. Deal. I'm in. Both Chaoji and Shikamaru immediately agreed on her bet and took a thousand Ryo from their pocket each. Did I just shoot my own feet just now? Ino regretted her decision as soon as she made it. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. I won't lose to any of you, bastard. Just then, Naruto suddenly shouted at the top of his lungs and surprised everyone in the room. Hey, what is he? A moron Ino snapped. She just lost 2,000 Ryo just like that. All because of that idiot. Chaji bumped his fist with Shikamaru as they grinned. Easy money, ah, oh, that felt great. Naruto grinned foolishly. He scratched the back of his head and laughed. Meanwhile, amongst the participants in the room, Orochimaru smiled creepily, while he eyed a few persons of his interest. Better than I anticipated. Kakekaki oi, should we do it? Three figures were sneaking around among the crowd. They swayed left and right, cratching them rushing. Just then, one of them suddenly jumped high and threw a pair of kunai to Kabuto. As if he knew things beforehand, Kabuto retreated with a backward jump. Unfortunately for him, another figure rushed toward him and swung his fist toward his temple. Kabuto adeptly evaded it with a bit backward tilt of his head, without any of his opponent's attack able to graze him. Or so he thought. Crack his eyeglasses were shattered. Pooh. His mind spun as his lunch rose to his throat, and he vomited. Ah. He threw up. Kabuto-san. Naruto and Sakura shouted worriedly as they rushed to help him, along with other participants. They were astonished by the sudden assault from the genins of the Hidden Sound Village. Guys, did you see that? Ino asked her teammates, she wasn't sure herself. He converted his chakras into some kind of sound waves we felt it crystal clear. In spite of their confident answers, both Chaoji and Shikamaru were solemn. Except that Chaoji was slightly excited about the new things he found. Are you confident against him, Chaoji? Shikamaru curiously asked with his still bored tone. It's not certain before this. But if that's the only thing he got, then it's as easy as cooking instant ramen Chaji grinned. He tore a jerky beef with a bite. Pathetic hear this? I'm Dosu from the Hidden Sound Village. The one with bandages covering most of his face, leaving only his left eye uncovered said. Write this on your card. The three from the Hidden Sound Village are definite future tunins. How dare yo dash Naruto was infuriated. As he wanted to rush and pummel Dosu on the ground, a booming sound reverberated inside the room. Quiet down you worthless bastard. Almost all of the participants covered their ears with their hands. Their ears were slightly wrung after that loud shout. With a big poof of smokes on the northern side of the room, suddenly appears quite a few persons in various attires, with only a white cloak and Kanoha headbands, as the only things they had in common. Thanks for waiting. I am Marino Ibiki, the head examiner of this first phase of the test tune and exam. The examiner, Ibiki, proceeded to warn the Genins from the Hidden Sound Village, then explained the rule of the exam. The first test was a paper test, and the explanation went smoothly if you didn't include Naruto's rowdy antics. Shikamaru immediately understood the core of the test, and covertly used his shadow clutch technique to connect his shadow with his teammates. Ino, who understood Shikamaru's intentions, immediately used her mind-sharing technique to initiate their own chat group. Shikamaru then explained the nature of this test to Chaoji and Ino. But, in case he was wrong, Shikamaru told them to fill the paper test with some answers. And just like that the supposed to be hard questions even for a tune-in, were answered by Shikamaru in less than half a dozen minutes flawlessly. I'm still wondering why you didn't study with this cheap brain of yours, Shikamaru Chaji wondered. Shikamaru used to be hating the Academy book with a passion, that until a certain event took place and changed his mindset entirely. Since then, he read anything that able to give him an edge and learn everything he was able to learn, even including doing the number one thing he hates the most, foregoing sleep. Because it's bothersome, Shikamaru replied briefly, while Ino just giggled silently on her desk. Shikamaru decided to close his eyes and train his chakra control for a while. 
with some crystal sands inside his pocket. Eno too tried to mold her chakra and perform the chakra scalpel subtly. Meanwhile, Chaoji also closed his eyes and tried to perform his calorie control technique and multi-size technique. He was able to easily perform both techniques almost without a flaw. He managed to control his change in every way he wanted to. His mind wandered by theories. His multi-size technique used a Yang nature chakra for it to perform. But he categorized it as the internal technique. And what if he uses the Yang nature chakra to perform the external technique like the other ordinary jutsu? And what if he uses his fire and earth nature transformation with an internal technique? All this while, he learns from the rail provided by others. And yet to explore this knowledge. One of his top reason was that it's not without any risk and potentially very dangerous to try, and he's unwilling to risk it. But in many instances, that line of thought keeps surfaced in his mind, that what if, Pak Chaoju snapped out of his thought, when a kunai were thrown to the desk two rows in front of him. What was that for? The man behind that desk nervously asked. You messed up five times, get out, you fail. One of the examiners said calmly while crossed out the said participant name in the list without sparing him another glance. The two others on his team get out of here, right now. Damn it his two other curse full of resentment as they stepped out of the room. At Shibiki POV. It was the first 10 minutes of the exam, and I saw three participants close their eyes. Were they sleeping? Heh, it seems that they figured the nature of this test already. Let's see who they were. Hamnara Shikamaru Yamanaka Ino Hoho the daughter of Anochi Sama. Huh? And Akamichi Chaoji, I need a second look at the Akamichi air. He looks so different from before. And if it was not because the heads up from Asuma-san, I might not recognize him. The new heir of the legendary Ino Shikacho. I won't even bother to check on them. With the brain of Nara, these questions will pose a little challenge to them. Moreover, it seems that they're done exchanging information. Let's see the others another half an hour passed, and several stupid participants either underestimated this test or overconfident of their own capabilities. That went without saying. My subordinates already kicked them out. A couple of them tried to rebel, but those are not problems that cannot be solved with the good old punch in the gut. Did that girl really think that I won't notice that the obvious string and the mirrors on the ceiling? Well, at least my subordinates didn't notice that trick. I need to discipline them further it seems. Hum. Shiringana, the heir of the Ichiha clan, and another one from Haigagosh. They had it easier than the others. That boy from the sand went out to the bathroom with a guy dressed as another examiner and they didn't even notice. Gosh, I really was too lax with them. This is bullshit. Do you have any proof that I cheated five times oh, another rebellious one appeared. A quite nice entertainment in this boring job, I must say. Anyway, it's not that uncommon for it to appear. Rather, I thought there will be more of them. Another minute passed ah, it's time for it. Everyone stop and listen. The sounds of scribbled paper stopped. Good, now we will start the tenth question. Just then, the sound boy is back from the bathroom. Nice timing, was your doll playing done? As I said those words, I saw a few of my subordinates sweated and went pale a bit. Good, at least you're aware of what consequence you bore. I will now explain, these are the rules, the rules of desperation. Now let's begin the tenth question. Those that do not wish to take the question, raise your hand. Once your number is confirmed, then you can leave. Once a bicky, the head examiner spoke, various gulping sound could be heard from the participant. Once you choose not to take it, your exam point will be reduced to zero. And yes, you will fail along with your two teammates. Ibiki stared at the participants with emotionless eyes. As for the other rules, once you take it and answer incorrectly, then you will lose your right to take the tune-in exam ever again. A smirk hung on Ibiki's face as he ended his warning. And as he expected, there were some participants that retaliated with their own arguments. But would Ibiki care? Obviously not. You guys are unlucky. This year we are doing things with my rules, Shikamaru POV. Don't underestimate me, I will not run even if I'm to be a genin forever. I will see myself become a hokage one day. That idiot again, yada yada with that speech. Really troublesome can we conclude this test and be done with it. Damn it I miss my pillow back home. I'll ask you again, your future riding in this decision. This is your last chance to quit, will you take the 10th question or not? Oi Baldi, just cut it out already. I cannot help but release an irritated sigh. He's quite a drama prince, alright? Troublesome. Now, to everyone still remaining I congratulate you on passing the first test. Bingo, my hunch was right. Now we can proceed to the next T dash. We already pass. What about the 10th question? I can't help but turn my head to see the imbecile that threw the bait for this Baldi to start his tail. And unsurprisingly it's her, it's the pink banshee from Team 7. No wonder better sleep for a while then. Third POV after the fiasco in the first phase of the test. That ended with the second test proctors, Enko's entrance. All of the remaining participants were guided to the site of the second exam. The 44th training ground, the forest of death. Okay? This is the place where the second test will be held. It's called the forest of death. As for why it's called like that he he. You will soon find out, Enko smiled sweetly as she explained this. Naruto, like an idiot he is, stared at Enko with contempt and tried to mimic her in a ridiculous way. You will soon find out, Mare. 
Do you think that scares me? That's nothing. I am not afraid Databayo Naruto shouted as he pointed his index finger at Enko's face. Hearing Naruto, Enko giggled. Wow, you're quite spirited amidst her giggle. Just then, she took out a kunai and threw it at Naruto. Fortunately, Enko just aimed that kunai to graze Naruto's cheek. Usually, kids like you are among the first ones to be killed. Enko flickered behind Naruto. She bowed her head slightly and licked Naruto's bleeding cheek with her eyes narrowed. Be careful, okay? Don't die on me. Enko took her thrown kunai and patted Naruto's shoulder. Hee hee, this test will be fun. But, before we begin here are some papers to be signed. She took a stack of papers from somewhere and shows them to the participants. There are agreement forms. There will be deaths in this phase. And I will get into trouble if you don't sign one so. Sign it or quit. Enko then explained the rules for the second phase of the exam, along with a brief explanation of the terrain of the 44th training ground. This second phase of the exam will end after 120 hours or 5 days. So, any teams that have not accomplished the task will be disqualified. Your team has to be complete for you to clear this exam. And, no quitting before you finish the task. Some final words of advice, don't die. Anko swept the participants with her stern gaze. In spite of her words, she still hoped for their survival. Well, you have signed those papers so we're cool. You can die if you want. Now, begin. 30 minutes later, every participant of the second test was entering the site almost simultaneously from the various gates of the site. A-A-A-H-H. -H -H. Not long after the second phase began, a loud and shrill scream was heard around the area. Team 10 was just strolled around as they inspect the area, and they were mildly surprised with the sudden scream. Seriously, not even five minutes passed in this test, yet someone already screamed like a banshee. Chaji frowned, he was in a bad mood because he's yet to find an interesting thing again among the participants. All that event was boring for him, and this slow process made him remember his current fat problem. How can I get fat again so? How do we proceed? Do we set traps? We hunt? Eno asked as the trio proceed to went deeper into the forest. We do it like we usually do, Eno scout. I'll bind Chaji attack, Shikamaru said nonchalantly. He wanted to quickly finish this exam and went home already. What a drag they went through the forest until they reached a river, along the way they were slaughtering a few poisonous insects and wild beasts that attacked them. They choose a relatively deep gap among the tree groves to hide and covered it with a Jinjutsu. Eno chose a raven on top of a tree, and use her mind-body switch technique. A few moments later Eno found two teams not far from their place. I found two teams, one at 200 meters south of us, and another one at 80 meters west of us. Chaji took a scroll from his patch, and saw a heaven character on top of it. Are there any indication that they have the earth scroll? Chaji asked which replied with a shook of Eno's head. Um, guys, can I try something? Eno explained her plan to both Shikamaru and Chaji. Will you be alright? Chaji asked worriedly. Are you sure? Eno firmly nodded, she steeled her resolve to not be a burden. Although no one told her that she's a burden, and she was sure that her teammates did not think her as such, she still felt that she was a few steps behind them. Immediately, Team 10 went to the west direction where a team was seen walking vigilantly in the forest. They were a team from the Hidden Sand Village, a team consisted of three men and two puppets. Team 10 was immediately hiding on a treetop among the leaves. Eno eyed the rightmost man without a puppet on him, and used her mind-body switch technique. The said man was seen days for a while, and his pupils slightly dilated. Success. His two teammates were yet to realize that their companion got his consciousness taken, as they keep walked slowly into the forest. The puppetless man who was controlled by Eno, searched his pocket, vest, and pouch, but not able to found a scroll. Not this one. Eno then controlled the said man to perform a chakra scalpel with one hand which she controlled to slit the throat of a man next to him silently. What are you doing? The last member of that team was astonished greatly. No, astonished was a great understatement of what he felt right now. Eno did not answer him, and immediately choked the last man, before the pupils of that man also slightly dilated, his consciousness also taken by Eno. Who two persons at once, amazing. Nice one, Eno. Shikamaru and Chaoji pleasantly surprised about their friend's plan working. This is my limit currently, but I plan to train it further. It's hard to split my focus into more than one part. She was sweated quite a lot, but a sweet smile bloomed on her face, was a clear indication that she was happy with her progress. Though she felt quite uncomfortable at her killing experience. They searched into their opponent's belongings and found a scroll on the man that Eno killed. Chaji crouched and took it. It was a scroll with a heaven character on it just like theirs. Well, better luck next time. After they finished their opponent, Team 10 encountered another team. This time, it was Jennings from another small village. 
Let me take care of this one. I want to try something inspired by Ino. Shikamaru also want to try his fruit of training these past few days. Chaoji and Ino just nodded. They watched Shikamaru as he sneaked near the enemies, ready to help at any given time. Shikamaru patiently lurking on top of a tree several distance away from the targets. When he saw the targets arresting behind some bushes and let down their guard, he immediately weaved a series of hand seals with one hand as he stealthily approached them. His other hand was gripping a katana handle, ready to attack. Nimpu. Cage Nui no Jutsu 1 Shikamaru's shadow wriggled as it swiftly rushed to the enemy's side, and surprisingly, it materialized into several sharp tendril-like needles. The tendrils were immediately pierced into the three unaware Jenin's chest. One got his heart pierced, while the other two got their lungs punctured. TCH. Missed. I still need more control. Shikamaru frowned, but he immediately do a follow-up attack. His katana flashed and three heads falls one after another. Their expressions were ones that depicted confusion mixed with disbelief. Chaoji, POV. After we killed the rest of them, we proceed to attack another team that we detected. Luckily for us, we found the earth scroll that we need. After a while, we decided to immediately go deeper into the forest and directly hand these two scrolls to the tower in the center. As usual, Ino used her technique to determine the direction before we ran into any problem. Apparently, Shikamaru was already impatient to finish this test. Ah, guys, I found the team seven. They were beaten and Bark and Naruto along with Sars Yuka were unconscious. Shall we help them? Ino spoke with a little hesitation in her voice. They're being watched by the Genins from the hidden sound well. I can't possibly say no to that, can I? Let's help them. What a drag I hear you Shikamaru, stop spreading your negativity here. Okay, let's give them a hand, then be done with it. We then went to where Team 7 rested, along the way we sneaked around the other participants, as we did not want to unnecessary fight. Taking from Shikamaru's dictionary, it's a drag we arrived around 8 minutes later, and when arrived, we saw that guy with thick eyebrows, fighting a ninja from the Hidden Sound Village. His name is Lee if I remember it right, and the one he fights is Dosu Lee Kick Dosu with an uppercut like kick on his jaw. I know that gotta be hurt like hell. And I think my guess was right, Dosu staggered. Then Lee followed with another kick which threw him to the air. That one awesome kick, his tojutsu is really goo, omit range. Two as I want to commend Lee for his awesome kick, what follows after made me wide-eyed. Lee wrapped his opponent with bandages in a blink of an eye, and held his opponent tightly in an upside-down position. Then he spun fast to gain more momentum for their crash. Even though unfortunately, the opponent's teammate was cushioned their fall with an Earth-style technique. That's still one hell of a high-risk technique. And to prove my claim, we saw Lee scrunched his face in pain afterward. Not giving Lee any rest, Dose rushed immediately with an arm swung towards Lee's side, which able to be dodged by Lee by a small margin. Contrary to his expectation, Lee lost his balance. He kneeled and vomited on the ground. There's a little trick here, you can't just dodge my attack. He 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 Dosu apparently satisfied with his attack. He brandished the large amplifier on his right arm with pride. I gave a signal to Shikamaru and Ino for them to take care of Dosu's teammates. When they nodded, I made my entrance to attract their attention. It's sound, isn't it? I leaped from the tree branch and landed beside Lee. You turned your chakra into a vibration that produced sound and used that toy to either direct it and amplify it. All eyes turned towards me as I made my presence known. The member of Team 7 was a bit relieved seeing my Kanoa headband, while Lee still staggered as he slowly raised back on his feet. Heh, another person comes to die. So what if you know my method? Do you even know what sound is? Dosu sneered. Although more than half of his face was covered with bandages, it was apparent from the way he acted. Hearing sound means your eardrum is catching the vibration in the air. And you know what? The eardrum of a human will break by sounds exceeding 150 megahertz, while deeper in the ear laid the inner ear membrane. When this is damaged, you lose your balance. Dosu puffed his chest more as he explained that you're a nerd hearing my reply, Dosu was stunned. And Naruto laughed out loud while chanting he's a nerd. On the side, even his teammates were laughing mockingly at him. Poor Dosu. That was a good one. He's right though, old lame Tajutsu won't work against us. One of Dosu's teammates wiped a tear on his eyes. Won't I too can dash took you too long enough. I cocked my head and grumbled. As I said that, just then Dosu's teammates were paralyzed, courtesy of Shikamaru and Ino. I almost fell asleep from his babbling. So am I they went out of their hiding place and Shikamaru using the shadow imitation technique on the sound genins. Then Ino threw two kunais. That pierced the two sound genin's throat. One left, you bastard. Dosu finally out of his stupor and rushed towards me, as I was the closest one from him, and threw a right hook which he aimed towards my left rib. In response, I just parried his right fist outward with my right palm, and elbowed him on his solar plexus. Chow? How can you not affected by my attack? He said as he paled and gasped for breath. Simple, I covered my head with chakra. It is not that hard, you know, as I stretched my hand to end him, an idea flashed in my mind. Let's try it. So I swung my legs upward and kicked him on his jaw, his brain was rattled, and his jaw cracked. Dosu was thrown high in the air. Just then, I jumped and grabbed him upside down, 
then spun faster and faster to gain more momentum. What was it called again? Oh, yeah, Omit Wrench. A moment before we reached the ground and crashed, I propel him headfirst towards the ground and jumped backward. Yup, my back feel uncomfortable. Not worth the effort when the dust settled, Dosu's body could be seen bent in an unnatural way. His spine was snapped, and his skull cracked open. Eno closed her eyes for a moment, and her eyes trembled before she opened it back again. She still was not able to get used with death yet, while Sakura became pale and directly vomited. Shikamaru was indifferent, Naruto and Sazuka scrunched up their faces, while Lee was slack-jawed. But, it seems that Lee's focus was on another matter. Youth. Awesome. How can you do the front lotus? Who are you by the way? That question took attention of Naruto and Sazuka. They too were intrigued by my identity apparently. My name is Akamichi Chaoji. Nice to meet you. Lee, isn't it? Your Tejutsu is awesome too. I smiled a bit because of his enthusiasm. He's a good guy. We shook hands and chatted a bit. I took a peek at Naruto and Sazuka and saw their eyes bulge in disbelief. No, 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 no. No way. Naruto crossed his arms as he denied my claim. Chaoji is shaped like this and not as good looking as you. I refuse to believe that you are Chaoji. He gestured a big circle with his arms. Sazuka turned his head to Shikamaru and Ino and saw their nodding. He gave me another disbelieving look. Somehow, I agreed with Naruto. I supposed to be fat. What did I do for me to deserve this kind of bad luck? Can we leave now? I want to sleep, Shikamaru grumbled. He gave me an unhappy look. Troublesome patience is virtue, Shikamaru. The patience a few moments passed after the Team 10 saved the Team 7 and Lee from the sound genins. They met with Niji and Tenten later, and all nine of them went to the tower to finish the test. Team 7 held Heaven Scroll and got Earth Scroll from the sound genins, while Lee's team was already got their hand on both scrolls. Sakura told them their encounter with someone one called Orochimaru, and Ino busied herself and explained who Orochimaru really was. Shikamaru scoffed of their ignorance. They will get killed one day from their lack of knowledge alone if this not changed. He eyed them as he flickered behind a beast that lurking around. Not my problem though needless to be said. They were shocked to know Orochimaru was one of the three legendary Senen, and he betrayed Kanoha for an unknown reason. Along the way, Tenten who was with a bit more knowledge about Fuenjutsu among them tried to check Sazuka's cursed seal but to no avail. Niji tried to check with his Byakugan, and he's only able to saw a patch of a duck spot in it. Chaoji being full of the wonder of a new thing, touched the curse mark on Sazuka, and felt something absorbed into him. And to everyone's surprise, Sazuka went unconscious, but his face showed a peaceful expression even a small smile was apparent on his face. Wah Chaji was confused as all of them looked at him. I didn't do anything. Maybe he's hungry. They gave him a disbelieving face. Regardless, aside from the ranting Sakura and the gloating Naruto, they just shrugged and put this problem on the back of their mind. Let's rest for a while and fill our stomach. They all then went onto a nearby river to rest for a while and cook the game they caught before they continued their exam. Lee San, thank you it's all thanks to you that I have awakened. I feel like I've become stronger from seeing your conviction. Sakura bowed slightly to Lee to express her gratitude. She then glanced towards Team 10 and slight fear could be seen on her eyes. Regardless, she also bowed to them. Thank you for saving our lives. No problem. Worship me. Troublesome. Can we rest already? Chaoji grinned and laughed it off as if it was nothing. Ino was gloating in her triumph on her rival Sakura. And Shikamaru was being Shikamaru and just grumbled. No problem, Sakura-chan. I did promise to protect you, didn't I? Lee smiled sheepishly and gave her a thumb up. I will train even harder from now on. Unknown to all, Naruto was in a state of unease. He kept feeling his emotions fluctuating. Something inside him keep making him felt rage. This unease that made him awaken during their fight with the sound genins. But, he didn't know what it is, so he just shrugged it off, and assumed that he's just upset that his ass got beaten by that snake guy or something. The sun went down, and the night approaches. Nine of them were currently on their way to hand their exam. It's not even half a kilometer left, and the tower already clearly seen. Buzz buzz buzz. The group was alerted with the buzzing sounds around them. Sakura turned her head, and saw a giant cockroach the size of a kitten between a tree not far from her. Kaya. And like a banshee, she shrilly screamed on top of her lungs. Sars Yuka was still unconscious, and Aruto covered his ears with both of his hands. Both Team 10 and Lee's team has also noticed the cockroach, but they were only felt indifferent aside from a mild disgust toward it because it was not a threat to them. Well, they were indifferent except for one person. Seeing Sakura was hysterical, Lee immediately jumped and squashed the cat-sized cockroach with his feet. Like a tenacious creature it is, it was still wriggled around beneath Lee's feet. Not able to hold their disgust, Eno and Tenten snapped. Eno controlled Lee's body and stomped on it over and over, while Tenten rushed over and hit it with a giant mace. Unsurprisingly, Sakura's scream attracted both beasts and other participants alike, 
This time with Shikamaru and Chaoji did not show their intent to act, it was Naruto's and Niji's turn to let their muscles loose. The battles rage on, Naruto was a bit overwhelmed before getting a hand from Lee, while Niji was able to hold on his own against a team of Genin. It was only after all of the battles were done that Sazuka was woken up from his slumber. They then continued to rush towards the tower. They forego their rest to cut the time for them to reach the tower. Under the moonshine, nine teenagers were gone inside a tower arrived inside a hall. On the wall, there was an unfold scroll with something written on it, and on its side was an instruction to open both of their scrolls. They took out their scroll, and it was emitting a chakra fluctuation afterward. It puffed into smokes before three additional persons were seen in front of them. Asuma Sensei, Guy Sensei, Aruka Sensei. They were all surprised to see their respective Jounin Sensei, except for Aruka who was asked for a special request to congratulate Naruto. Without responding to them, Asuma opened his mouth to preach the content on the unfold scroll behind them. If you lack heaven, seek wisdom and be prepared. Guy grinned and continued with the next line. If you lack earth, run in the fields and seek advantages. And if you have both heaven and earth, only then you will triumph even in the most dangerous path. Aruka proudly looked at his former students. That swelling pride of his would only able to be understood by a teacher. That saw his students' success on their path. Congratulations. They then explained the meaning of those words, and gave their students some advice for them to improve themselves to be better as a ninja and a person. This is our identity and our pride, Aruka said while pointing at the Kanoha symbol. You are not kids anymore, you're a ninja. A Kanoha ninja. So act like one, and don't you ever shame our pride. But, first thing first, you have to be alive. We have confirmed there are 18 participants who have passed the second test. In accordance with the rules, we will hold a preliminary before the third test. With this, we hereby declare that the second test is complete. On top of the tower, currently seated Saratobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage of the Kanoha. Opposite him was the head examiner of the second test, Mitarashi Anko. Anko's complexion was pale. She clutched her nape while trying to silently bore her pain. Now, does the curse still hurt? Hiruzen was observing Anko, his face scrunched as he drowns in worry. He is here, not as much as before, thank you Hokage-sama. Anko forced a smile and showed her gratitude. He probably Hiruzen nodded his head, his eyes lit with wisdom. Yes, his target is probably him so, why did you fail? I'm sorry, Irochimaru sama My teammates were all killed by the Kazakija's son, we were unlucky enough to be engaged with them. But, I managed to tell him until he reached the tower. In one of the rooms inside the tower, Kabuto currently kneeled in front of the disguised Orochimaru. He was sweating bullets, he was pressured by the chakra that Orochimaru focused onto him. He presented Orochimaru with a stack of cards filled with information he gathered. You're dismissed, wait for my next order Orochimaru frowned. He didn't like it when things don't go according to his plan. It seems that I need to adjust a thing or two congratulations on passing the second test. The third Hokage has announced the start of the preliminary phase before the third exam. Before that though, he was explaining the reason behind the joint exam being held as a replacement of war among the allied country. And now before we start the third test, the preliminary shall be Again. The preliminary was headed by Jekko Hayate, a special Jounin ranked shinobi from Kanoha. He had short brown hairs, dark colored eyes, and dark markings under his eyes. He was slightly pale and coughed a lot. He wore the standard Kanoha shinobi outfit, complete with a forehead protector that he wore as a bandana, a flak jacket, and a regular shinobi sandals. He also carried a katana with a rectangular handguard strapped over his back. Because the exam apparently has been too easy this year. We have a bit too many peoples remaining. Hayate sweeps all of the remaining participants with his stern gaze. According to the pre-made rule of the Chunin exam, a preliminary must be held and trim the number of the participants. Hayate then took out a name list of the remaining participants and a pen. Since we will begin the preliminary immediately, those who are feeling unwell and feels like quitting after hearing these explanations, please come forward now. Many of the peoples present were surprised. Some of them would just finish their second test on the last day and have not a single rest. Ah, I forgot to tell you, this is an individual battle, so you may forfeit based your own judgment. One man from the Hidden Grass Village raised his hand and stepped forward, followed by another man from the same village. I'm sorry, I'm feeling unwell. My injured calf also hasn't been healed properly. Me too, I won't be able to start right away with my injuries. Needless to be said, one of them was the disguised Orochimaru, and the other was the disguised Kabuto. They killed another team from the Hidden Grass Village, and took their identities as their own for this occasion. You're Hanita Yuchi and Yamada Goto, from the Hidden Grass Village, right? You may leave now. Hey8 gestured for them to step aside and leave the arena. A few medical nins came in, and took them to be healed properly on the side, before they're able to watch the preliminary from the audience seat. Meanwhile, Sazuka started to feel uncomfortable. Unlike in the canon, he didn't know yet the effect from the Curse Seal, since it hasn't activated yet. But as paranoid as she is regarding her former sensei, Enko kept an eye on the Ichiha air and noticed his weird behavior. It seems like my conjecture was right Enko informed the Hokage of this, and Sazuka almost forced to quit the preliminary before Kakashi interrupted them, and he promised that he will take great care of him. 
Fortunately, with Kakashi's promise, the Hokage relented and let Sazuka to continuing his participation in the preliminary. Now, this electric billboard screen will show the matchup for each battle. Hei pointed at a relatively large screen beside the arena. Well, let's cut the case. Although sudden, let's roll the first two names for the first fight. Yamanaka Ino versus Tamari on one corner of the arena. Ino gulped as she stared at the screen. She turned his head to see Chaoji. Their eyes met, and Ino let out a nervous smile on her face. She gave Chaoji a face that said, please cheer me up. Chaoji, POV. It seems that I'm not first. No problem. I can analyze the other participants first. I turned my head and looked at Ino. I flashed a grin and waved at her. You can do IT. A little shout won't hurt, right? Then again, even Hokage-sama's attention scene peaked to me. He chuckled at my antics and waved it off. Now we will be starting the first match. Everyone that not chosen as the fighter, please move to the audience section on the upper level. Yamanaka Ino of the Konoha and Tamari of the Suna, please get into the position. After Ino and her opponent were called by the referee, Jeko-san, I along with the other participants was moved to the audience seats. Ino's opponent was a girl from the Hidden Sand Village. She has teal eyes and sandy blonde hair, which is gathered into four consecutive pigtails. Her outfit consists of a single light purple colored, off-the-shoulders garment that extended two halfway down her thighs with a scarlet sash tied around her waist. And the thing that made her eye-catching was the thing that she brought on her back, a large iron fan with almost the same height as herself. Ino was visibly nervous. That girl really needs a confidence boost. I glanced at Shikamaru as I thought he was leaning on the wall and closed his eyes. It seems that the responsibilities to cheer for her fell on me. Get ready, that Tamari smirked as she brandished her iron fan. She twirled it around with one hand as if to intimidate her opponent. Fight. The referee announced the start of the fight. Just then, Tamari waved her fan and caused a great gust on the arena. Ino braced herself. She took out a few kunais from her pouch and attached an explosion tag on one of the kunai. Ho, she started with a distraction as the wind blows. Tamari rushed toward Ino closed her fan, and swung it as a makeshift club. Ino jumped to the side to evade the blow, and threw the kunais on her hand. Tamari swung her fan to deflect the incoming kunais. But just as she parries them, Ino made a tiger hand seal, and triggered the explosion tag on the kunai. Boom. I whistled at her nice execution. Now I wonder what she will do next. Come on, Ino somehow I felt giddy. So I cheered out loud for her. The smokes recede, and there was a log in the place of Tamari. The girl herself was several feet away with her using her fan as a cover to shield her from the explosion. In the meantime, Ino used a clone technique to summon two of her clones. Ino's clones flickered to Tamari's side and restricted her movement with strings covered with chakra, while Ino herself kneeled on the ground and made a hand seal. That cannot be more familiar to me. Shintenshin, no jutsu. As she executed her technique, her eyes closed and her body limped yet still in a kneeling position. On the other side of the arena, the court off guard Tamari struggled for a while before she smoked and declared that she gave up. I, Tamari of the Sand, would like to give up and forfeit the match. This made many of the other participants slack-jawed. Not many peoples were familiar with this kind of technique. What made me worried was that Tamari's teammate, Gara. He squinted his eyes and blaring his bloodlust toward her. The Jounin from the Hidden Sand was alerted and immediately went into the arena and took Tamari, after the referee announced her loss. Ino walked into the audience section with a wide smile on her face. Congratulations. I know you can do it. I patted her shoulder, she smiled even wider. Was this an illusion or she looked more beautiful even though she looked like a mess? Kai. Hum. Not a Jinjutsu congratulations, take a rest and fix yourself. Shikamaru looked at Ino with one eye closed and pointed at her attire. That full of dust. I'll be back. Ino rushed to the restroom. He he, she's rowdy as always. Now, on to the next fight. I looked onto the screen and another whistle escaped my mouth. Ichiha Sazuka versus Yoroi? That pretty boy's fight might be an interesting thing to watch third POV. The fight between Sazuka and his opponent went almost the same as it was in the canon. But, perhaps because of his lack of knowledge about the Curse Seal effect, he wantonly used his chakra and his clan's signature Kekai Jenkai, Sharingan. The Curse Seal was partially activated mid-battle, which almost made the fight stopped. But, Sazuka quickly adjusts and stopped using his Sharingan and Ninjutsu. Instead, he acted like in the canon, and used Lee's front lotus which he modified to end the fight. Sazuka was declared as a winner, albeit that his condition kept worsening by each second past. Amidst his misery, he remembered when Chaoji touched the cursed seal and made him unconscious back then. He took a gamble and hastily rushed toward Chaoji. Please, can you check the mark on my neck again? Sazuka said, half begging. He has his pride, but pride was not a reason to risk his life which he committed to avenge his fallen clan. That massacred by his brother. Ino who has already cleaned herself and changed her clothes looked at Sazuka. She was used to be his fangirl. 
But, she didn't know why she doesn't have that kind of admiration toward him again. Then she averted her gaze onto Chaoji, and questions popped up on her mind. Just then, Kakashi flickered behind Sars Yuka 2 took him and fixed his cursed seal. But, before he was able to do that, Chaoji decided to fulfill Sars Yuka's wish, and stretched his hand out to check the mark on Sars Yuka's neck. Just like before, Chaoji felt something flowed from the mark on Sars Yuka's neck toward him. That something was immediately absorbed by his body like water that got absorbed by a sponge before he was able to identify it. Chaoji frowned, he hates it when something went out of his control. He complied with Sazuka's wish because he was curious. But that curiosity has yet to be fulfilled. And now his curiosity intensified. That curiosity acted like an itch that he can't scratch, and it made him frustrated to no end. One thing he was certain of, whatever it is, he was sure that it was connected with the reason he was not able to gain more fat. That conclusion added more oil to the fire, and Chaoji was even more eager to check the mark on Sazuka's neck to scratch his itches. On the side, Kakashi was in disbelief. He didn't know what happened, but from his point of view, the cursed mark was able to be deactivated forcefully by Chaji. He has to report this to the Hokage later. But for now, he has to take Sars Yuka dash much of the reluctance of Chaji and fix the cursed seal. Kakashi was not the only one that can't believe his own eyes. Orochimaru was also gobsmacked. He was both astonished and pleasantly surprised. He added a new name on his target list, moreover, that very name was placed on the very top of the list. Meanwhile, on the arena, the referee was announcing the next fight. Rock Lee vs Gaara with the anger that fueled Gaara from Tamari's loss. Gaara was emitting more killing intent than in the canon, it was so much that it was almost tangible. And as a Jaunan who worth his salt, Mike Guy detected it, and allowed Lee to detach his weights all the way from before the match begin. It's time for your turn, you can take them off. I allow it. Let's go. Lee Guy cheered for Lee with full of spirit. While he added, his trademark grin never left his face. Third match, Rock Lee of the Kanoha vs Gura of the Sand fight. As the referee announced the start of the match, Lee's figure was instantly blurred. And he was up high running in the ceiling. Lee, go. Guy cheered out loud, meanwhile. Lee suddenly appeared beside Gara and threw a roundhouse kick on his face. But to Lee's surprise, Gara's sand was already there to shield him. Sand. Lee refused to relent, and he keeps throwing a few more punches and kicks onto Gara, which all blocked by his sand. Lee, you can do it. Sakura also cheered when she saw Lee relentless attack. He saved her once, so she felt obligated to at least cheer for him. But it seems that it's not effective to fight him in close combat. Why don't he use ninjutsu or jinjutsu? Hearing her, Guy's expression turned a bit somber. It's not like he doesn't want to, but Lee can't use both ninjutsu and jinjutsu. That's why he spent all of his time on tojutsu. He worked hard and poured all of his heart toward the only thing in his arsenal, the tojutsu. Guy then gave Sakura a thumb up and flashed his trademark grin. But even if he only has tojutsu, he won't lose to anyone. Sakura stared at Lee on the arena, her fist clenched hard. You can do IT, Lee. Kick his ass. On the arena, Lee finally landed his first clean hit on Gara's face. And all of the representatives from the hidden sand was shocked. Chaji who overhears the conversation between Guy and Sakura became interested in Lee. And he watched Lee with eyes full of admiration. He was able to tell that Lee was a genius of hard work. And he appreciates hard work more than talent. Lee, explode. Come on Lee, fight. More cheering came from both Mike Guy and Sakura. Chaji POV haha, as I thought. Lee was indeed an interesting person. Judging from his movement alone, I was certain that he trained like no others. It's even more so if what is Jounin Sensei, Mike Guy, said was true. I can't imagine what it was like not to be able to use Jinjutsu and Ninjutsu in a world full of shinobi like this. But after seeing Lee, I can be certain that as long as you're willing to work hard, then you still can thrive. But, I also intrigued by Gura, specifically by his sand. They appear as if they were sentience, having their own will and consciousness. That or Gura has incredible spatial awareness and chakra control. Hum. Oh. Did you see that, Shikamaru? He layered his whole body with sand all this time. I was excited. That's a thing that I haven't think of. But, that must be uncomfortable, right? No, my eyes are closed. He said that even without bothering to open his eyes. Hey sh, how lazy can you be? This is an exam, forget it. I won't lower myself to get angry at his laziness. It is not over ooh. He used that technique again. Um, what was it called again? Omit range. That's it. I don't like that technique though. Regardless, it was admirable that his non-chakra enhanced body was able to withstand the backlash of this unpolished technique. Um, I'm saying that because I already thought of several aspects that could improve this technique after I tried it back then. Yeah, you're awesome Lee. That Sakura really got emotional over this fight. I shouldn't get close to her in this exam. Lest she hurt my eardrums from her scream alone well. Lee was awesome. But dash, Sabakiro. Ash, he's not careful enough. An enormous quantity of sand completely envelops Lee from every direction, and it's clear that Gara intended to encase Lee in it. Lee was not able to dodge in time. I guess the pain held him in place. Sabaki kick. 
Sands completely in Case Lee from head to toe, forming a sphere-like orb of sand. Maybe this is the end. Perhaps only Tajutsu was not enough. Can't hard work only really beat talent. Lee. Sakura screamed on top of her lungs. And this time I can't even bother. My focus all poured on the arena. My face was grim. This move could be fatal. Lee. Do I T. The lotus bloom bloomed twice. Hum. What's that even mean? Samen, open. The sand sphere was cracked before finally blasted open from the inside. I catch a glimpse of a blurry shadow rushed out of the sphere. Could it be? My eyes darting around searching for Lee before I finally found him up in the air near the ceiling with Gara bent over from Lee's punch on his abdomen. His sand armor was cracked on various places. Gara was blasted downward. But again before he was landed, Lee already down there on the ground. Now I get a good look at it. His skin's turned red and his veins bulged all over his body. I felt a bit familiarity. Somehow I felt that I saw this technique before Showman open. His hair raised from the hot air pressure that he emitted from his body. This is crazy. Even from this far, I could tell that his body was beyond its limit. Lee swung his foot upward and blasted Gara into the air. And just like before he jumped high and hit Gara numerous times. Lee was so fast that he appeared as if he was teleporting. Lee continuously strikes Gara from multiple directions, pummeling him into the air. Toman, open. I scrutinized their exchange and saw that Gara somehow bound by Lee's bandage. With a strong punch, Gara was blasted once more into the ground. Lee, who was still in the air, pulled him again via his bounded bandage. Your orange. With a slight spun, Lee also maneuvering downward. With his stretched leg, Lee kicked Gara hard. As they arrived on the ground, the gourd on Gara's back was turned into sands that cushion his fall. He stretched his hand toward Lee's direction and commanded his sands to attack him. That was when I realized that Lee already lost consciousness. Sabaki kick. Oh no, my body moved on its own. Before I realized, I was already in the arena. Using an Earth-style technique, I shielded Lee and myself from the sands. It was then, I saw a man who looked almost the same as Lee. Perhaps he was his family. It's enough that man said while he stood in front of us. Why? Why did you save him? I looked at Gara and pondered his question before long. I opened my mouth and answered him. Lee already a friend of mine. That move of yours could be fatal. And we're here in this stage I not to kill each other. And I can't help that my body moved on instinct. A friend? Huh. The sands covered Gara's body as he back on his feet and walked out of the arena. The winner is Gara of the Suna. The referee finally announced the result of the fight. The man who looked like Lee turned and bowed toward me. Thank you for saving him, and for being his friend, my name is Mike Guy. I'm his sensei. Don't mind it, Guy-san. Lee is my friend, we barely met once, though dash it was at his moment, we turned our head and saw Lee. He stood on his feet and took a battle stance. Lee, that's N dash Guy-san. I tugged his arm and cut his speech, and Guy-san realized that Lee already lost consciousness. He hugged Lee and cried silently. You have proved your ninja way, Lee. Now, rest I realized, my conjecture was right. You can't beat talent with only hard work. Because if you don't believe in yourself, your hard work were all in vain. That's why you also need conviction. And I know, Lee has both. Maybe I can match his amount of hard work. But I can't even fathom how deep his conviction is. Thank you, Lee. This lesson meant a lot to me. The next match is... The referee announced the fighters for the next match, after Lee was carried by the medical nuns, and the arena was restored to its former state. I was warned by the examiner to not interfere again, else I will be disqualified. My response. I apologized and just shrugged it off. The referee called. I lifted my head to see the screen and grimaced after I saw the name displayed on it. Haruno Sakura vs Akamichi Chaoji. My hope for an exciting match was gone just like that. Well ha ha ha. That lazy ass Shikamaru even laughed at it. Oh boy, just why and just as I expected, the fight didn't even last for 3 seconds. Bah, as if that could be called a fight. Sakura-chan. Naruto screamed from the upper level. Let's not talk about that little prankster. I went to the upper level after the fight and saw Shikamaru and Ino still chuckled, which pissed me off. Congratulations, Chaji Nai-san. Um, ooh, Hanata-chan. Ever since we were a kid, she always a shy girl. I somehow ended up as a big brother figure for her. Me being a mature kid at that time, in couple with my bigger physique, helped gave that kind of impression to her. Yo, Hanata. Hanata-chan. Yup, even Shikamaru and Ino were close with her. She was as adorable as a girl possibly can. Behind her were Kiba and Shino followed. We greeted each other and talked a bit. Nara Shikamaru versus Inuzuka Kiba. Oh, you're my opponent lazy face. Prepare to lose. Shut up, you horny dog. Don't expect me to go easy on you. Kiba and Shikamaru exchanged banter for a while. I don't know why Shikamaru called Kiba horny dog. My intuition said that there's a story behind it, which I don't want to know. Their fight was exciting enough, but I'm already familiar with all of their techniques. The fight after that was exciting enough. It's Shino against a puppeteer called Kenkoro from the Hidden Sand Village. My focus was on the puppeteer, his techniques were excellent. 
It was sad that he can't do much. Unfortunately for him, Shino was his exact counter. That Kankoro utilized poison, Shino was resistant against most poisons because of his clan's technique. Hell, his puppet was even turned into a snack by Shino's bugs. Kankoro was forced to forfeit. He can't fight back with all of his techniques countered. The fight after was funny, Naruto overwhelms Tenten with a sheer number of his clones. Though it takes a dozen minutes before Tenten forfeited, the nature called. I went for the toilet for a while. Everything was fine. The winner is Hauga Niji. Let me rephrase that everything was fine until that bastard mercilessly pummeled Hinata to the ground. Hauga Niji now I'm out for blood. As I want to rush into the arena and kick that Niji on his crotch, Shikamaru slapped my head. Hey, what was that for? I know that face. Don't do a stupid thing. You big oaf Shikamaru sighed. He shook his head. That made me wondered, and I just waited for him to explain himself. Chaji, sometimes I am pressed by your wits and bravery, and at the other time, I was wondering about how stupid and rash you can be. I gave him a confused face. I took a deep breath and frowned. Understanding my anxiety, Shikamaru opened his mouth and explained. Although I too am upset that Hinata was beaten. But this is an exam. There's no way that the examiner let the participants die at this stage. And who was Hinata? She is the Hyiga clan's heiress. Even the Hokage-sama himself won't be able to soothe her family if something happened to her here. A realization took over me as I calmed down. Indeed what Shikamaru said was true. I let my emotion got the best of me. Me. I sighed and slumped my shoulder. You're right? But I saw Niji's eyes, and his eagerness to beat Hinata was so explosive. And I felt wrath each time he hit Hinata-chan. I may know something I and Shikamaru turned her head Eno just back from the medical room where Hinata was taken by the medic. Niji was Hinata-chan's cousin, his father was the twin of Hinata-chan's father. Once upon a time, Eno told us Niji's story that she heard from her father when he was drunk. Niji was born as the son of Hazashi Hayuga, placing him in one of the Hayuga clan's branch houses. When the heiress of the main house, Hinata-chan, turned three years old, Niji's forehead was branded with the Hayuga branch clan's customary curse seal by his uncle, Yashi-san. Despite how young he was at the time, Niji's natural talent with the Hayuga's trademark techniques was apparent to his father. For this reason, Hizashi-san resented that Niji was marked with a curse seal, as he felt it bound him to a life of service to the main house when he should be destined for greater things. His anger would often manifest subconsciously, prompting Hiyashi-san to activate Hizashi's curse seal and punish him with pain from time to time, an act that traumatized Niji. Shortly after Niji received his curse seal, a Jonin ranked shinobi from Kumogaka came to visit Kanoha and took advantage of the peace treaty. He attempted to kidnap Hanata-chan in order to gain the secrets of the Hayuga clans by Akigen. At that time, Hiyashi-san was able to stop and kill the said shinobi. In what became secretly known as the Hayuga affair, Kumo denied the allegations made against its Jonin and insisted Hiyashi-san's actions were a declaration of war from Kanoha. As the peace was as fragile as a paper at that time, the only way to avoid hostilities between the two big villages would be if Hiyashi-san was turned over to Kumogaka as compensation. At that time, Hiyashi-san was willing to do so if it meant protecting Kanoha, although that, in turn, would give Kumo the Baikigen. Hiyashi-san, Hiyashi-san's twin brother, volunteered himself to the Hokage to be Hiyashi-san's body double. Since his cursed seal would destroy his Baikigen at the time of his death, a fate that he insisted upon over Hiyashi-san's protests. Niji was too young to understand what actually was happening at the time, and apparently, over the years he came to believe that his father had been forced to die for the main house. Of course, that means it would not be shaped if he was told the truth about the incident. Unfortunately, that event was regarded as S-ranked secret by the council. So, only the selected few that know the truth about the said event. Hearing Ino's story, I realized that Niji too was a victim. We also can't tell him the truth as that would implicate Anochi-san as he was the one that let the information leaked. I now know that Niji became spiteful towards the members of the main house for what he believed they'd done to his father. Thus he missed no opportunity to try and harm Hanata-chan. Ino also added that Niji also came to believe that the course of a person's life was determined from the moment of their birth and could be altered under no circumstances. Anyway, the preliminaries finally ended. We were given a month's time before the next phase of the test began. We drew a lot to determine the first round matchups for the third phase of the exam. The bracket for the tournament of the third exam goes like this. Yamanaka Ino vs. Ichiha Sars Yukigara vs. Akamichi Chaoji Aburam Shino vs. Nara Shikamaru Hayuga Niji vs. Yuzumaki Naruto Lo and behold, Niji was paired with Naruto. Hokage Sama also mentioned that the possibility of both everyone and no one becomes a Chunin. Thus, some Something clicked inside me. I remembered that Niji looked down on Naruto, and he believed that Naruto could not win against him, because he believes that was what fate has dictated them so. So, what if if Naruto defeated Niji? There's a chance that his belief would be proven wrong, that too depending on how it happened. I discussed that probability with my teammates, 
and they too somewhat came into the same conclusion. Ino decided that she will ask his father to either allow her to meet with Hiyashi-san to have a word with him or his father should do it for her. She wanted to tell the implication of Niji's misperception, and she wanted to try to persuade Hiyashi-san to explain himself to Niji. Shikamaru would ask his father to help Anoichi-san to convince Hiyashi-san to. While I will somehow help Naruto getting stronger, don't get me wrong, I won't train him myself. But, I was more than capable to find someone to train him either with money power or my family's connection, maybe both. I can only sigh at myself, why do I have to be so meddlesome? But, if I let things take a course, then Hinata-chan would be implicated in a bad way in one way or another. At least if I steer the path, I would be able to minimalize the bad effect that it may cause. Hey! Let's go eat then to the onsen. I need to refresh my tired body. Ino's eyes sparkled when I mentioned onsen, while Shikamaru also looked interested in it. We visited Hanada-chan and Lee first, but seeing that they're resting, we excused ourselves and went to have our lunch. Oh, you want to go to an onsen without inviting me? Asuma sensei was approaching us. Behind him was a bald man with dark eyes and very thick eyebrows. This said man wore the attire of something that made him look like a monk. Yo, this is my old friend Chiriku. Chiriku, these are my proud students, Chaji, Shikamaru, Ino. We exchanged greetings and threw some pleasantries at each other. Chiriku-san was a very polite man, as far as I can tell. He appeared as a calm and composed individual. Anyway, I was kidding. You can enjoy yourself in an onsen by yourself. I want to accompany my old friend here. But, meet me the day after tomorrow at 8 near the waterfall inside the Nara forest. You should rest for tomorrow, okay? He waved goodbye, so we went to eat at the nearby restaurant. We decided to went to the public onsen at the east edge of the village. So after our stomach was full, we went there immediately. We parted way, me and Shikamaru to the men's section, while Ino to the women's section. As I and Shikamaru have done changing our clothes, we heard a voice who, What creativity. You're a genius. We came into the onsen, and we saw Naruto transformed into a naked girl in front of a white-haired old man, while doing a sexy pose. Maybe, just maybe, we have seen what we shouldn't. Gosh, what has the world become? And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.